Here we are, Tropicana in Laughlin, Nevada, AKA the meeting point registration point for best in the desert. We're here, how you doing, sir? Doing pretty good, how about yourself? I cannot complain, we're getting ready for another big weekend. What's your name? Brandon Bunch with uh, UTV Sports Magazine. Perfect, I have to talk to you on camera here. You're giving me such great insight. We're talking about conditions and how the wind is just brutal, but that may actually help these guys, right? Absolutely, absolutely. It's, it sucks for us out here shooting, because it's a little tough to get you know, nice stable shots and that kind of stuff, but for the racers, it definitely helps clear the dust off the course, and that way they're not, you know, they're not trying to through the night, so. I almost lost my hat. <laughs> so the dust, will, I mean, the wind won't get so severe that it could cause any type of detriment to the vehicles, right? No, no, not at all. Not, not that I would think anyway. It'll definitely help the guys out. Tonight, Perfect. So. How many years have you been covering this? Uh, about five years now. Tell me about this event in particular and how this stands out from all the other events that we cover with Best in the Desert. Uh, this event's a bit of a sprint race. The course is pretty short, only 16 miles long. So it's all out start to finish. Uh, there's a lot less uh, conservation and it's more of, uh, you know, just 100% all the way to the finish for these guys. So they race hard and it's usually pretty entertaining to watch. Does this race make for a much better spectator experience? Because we often talk about everybody loves Vegas to read a lot of time. It's almost impossible to watch as a spectator unless you've got a helicopter. Yep, yeah, exactly. They have the, the nice infield area over there where the pits are, and there's grandstands for the spectators. And being a lap race, you actually get to see the trucks come around multiple times rather than seeing them once or twice over the course of eight hours. So it's pretty good. And last thing in your mind, what truly makes this race special you've been coming here for a few years now what really stands out what's something that you really enjoy about it it's rough it's super rough the course is super punishing uh, especially where we get to go out and shoot and that kind of stuff it's it's pretty epic to see what these vehicles are capable of out here so it's always a good time perfect anything you like that who else we got here we got the crew hanging out having fun yep. there we go well enjoy your weekend man we're glad Definitely you're here well. Young and talented James Dean. This is the way to bounce back, my friend. Qualified number one after a tough Vegas Torino. First off, what happened in Vegas Torino? I know that was a rough one for you. Uh, we had a really good start going. We were uh, third physical up to mile marker 77, and all three of the top three, we all had problems. Rob had a flat, Bryce Menzies had trans, I believe, transmission problems, and then I lost to Idler Pulley all within probably two miles of each other. So it was a tough break and it was just something we, we tried fixing and it ended up hurting the motor. So unfortunately we just, we had to call it the next pit. So, so mentally, bummed. how did you prepare yourself for this one? Were you just eager to get back out oh. there? Did you have to make changes? Uh, just very eager. We made a couple little changes, got a little bit more power out of the motor and I came to this race with full intentions of just as fast as I could drive and to get up front and show everyone these buggies are, are here to make a statement. Excellent. So tell me about qualifying. How long was it? So the qualifying loop, I think, was about 5.3 miles. It was a lot of turns, some sand washes, uh, some whoops, some big jumps, kind of a little bit of everything. Fast, very fast. Um, we had a flawless run, flawless run. Hit every, every mark we could make. We picked up some time that I thought we could find, and we could not have gone any better. So just stoked on our qualifying run. We ended up first overall, so just couldn't be any happier with that to start the weekend off. How much does that mean to you to out-qualify all the trucks here? I mean, that's impressive. Oh, it's awesome to be able to, this was a buggy track, so going into I knew we had a little bit of an advantage, but to beat every truck, like Jason Voss, Harley Lettner, you got all these drivers out here. Uh, to come out here and get first overall, it's just, just one of the coolest feelings out there, honestly, and my dad did this a couple years ago, so it's, it's even better, a little more cherishing that father and son being able to do this together at the same race, and like I said, I just couldn't be more proud to be able to do what we did yesterday, and hopefully we can keep it going for the rest of the weekend. Did you have to change the setup at all heading into this event? Uh, no, setup usually stays about the same. We made a couple tweaks. We have a little qualifying setup we run, which is nothing special, but uh, helps us get a little bit more out of it. And Anything you can reveal, or is that top secret? Uh, just, we just changed tires is all. Okay. Nothing serious. What, you a different... Uh... We go to a smaller tire to help with the gear ratio. Okay. Gets it out of the corner a little bit better. Um, 
So, got to thank the BFG, first of all, for such an awesome tire. Hooked up amazing yesterday. So, we got that. King Shocks with the best shocks out there. Um, everyone that helps get us to the races. My grandpa and my dad for always supporting me and having my back. And uh, So, just here to have some fun and here to win. Tell me a little bit about this race, because I'm so intrigued. It seems like it really stands out. All the best in the desert races are marathons, aside from this one. We just went Vegas to Reno, 500 plus miles. Now we're doing four short laps. Um, why do you think this race uh, has this type of identity? Why do you think they go to such a short race instead of extending this one out many miles? I think it's probably to help a little bit with the spectating. You got all these people that come out and help you with your racing and to help pit sports you in. They see for on a good day, maybe a couple minutes. This race is really a fan crowd famous. It's like going to an outdoors supercross race to a supercross arena. Everything's just jam packed with action. Everything's right in front of you. You can see everything. Like I said, there's four laps, 14 mile loops. So you're gonna see us every 10, 12 minutes. So they have an awesome short course here. So everyone can sit there and watch. Like I said, I think it's more of a fan base thing and to get the drivers to do a little something different, kind of hang it out there and just kind of show everyone what these cars are capable of really. So. so as a driver, you're used to going five, six, seven, eight, nine hours at some of these races. This one's going to be very short. Yes. What? How does that change for you? You feel like you don't have as much time to get comfortable. <laughs> you need it's a sprint. Oh, this is most races are turning into a little bit of a sprint, but this is an all-out war zone. This is going to be when you get in the car. As soon as that green flag drops, you there's no time to get comfortable. It is as fast as you can go. You got to get around that track and around to the end of the finish line as fast as possible. It's an hour of non-stop as fast as you can drive. So it really kind of separates the guys that can kind of cherry pick in those long races and hang back and have a good finish still to the guys that want to, that can push hard and show you what they can really do. What advice did your father give you going into this race? Because he's <laughs> run it, what, several times, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, Dad just gave me the normal advice of hanging out there and just be smooth. That's, that's what we did. So we're going to try to keep that going for the weekend, and I think we'll end up on top. Love it. Anything else you'd like to add about this crazy event? Oh, I just got to thank Best in the Desert and everyone that helps put the show on. and. Get us out here. I got to thank our sponsors South Point, King Shocks, Ultra Wheels, Vision X, Jmar Brakes, BF Goodridge, Monster Seal, Patrick Signs, um, Weddell Industries, um, TCS Converters, and just my grandpa for always supporting me and having my back with everything. So, I, like I said, I can't thank everyone enough for what they do and Excellent. get us here. And again, some quick stats on you. How old are you? 23. 23. How many years have you been doing this? Uh, this is my seventh year. Seventh year. Excellent. How old is your father? Uh, my dad's 51. And he's been doing this since what? Oh, he's been doing this for probably 30 years since he was 18. Good lord, that's amazing. What are your hobbies outside of racing? Nothing. I, I focus my whole life around racing. They live for racing. And finally, your vehicle here. Tell me about what makes it unique or some of the features. Like, for instance, these shocks are massive. How much travel do we have on these shocks? So we get about 16 inches of travel on our rear, about 21 on the front. Um, and then we run a Bunderson chassis. We're the only people that run it. What's a Bunderson chassis? So the car itself is called a Bunderson. A guy named Kevin Bunderson builds it. He built such an awesome car. I got to give everything to him. This car is amazing. Uh, but we're the only people that run his car. So um, we're a little, we're a lot more unique than most. People. It's just a little. There's a lot. Of, you can do a lot of things in this buggy class. You're not really bound to anything. No. Right? Yeah. Buggies is unlimited. So whatever you can do. So it's a different. Um, what makes your chassis different from everybody else? We're a lot lighter. Lot We're light. about a thousand, two thousand pounds lighter than most most cars. A thousand pounds lighter than most buggies. Than most cars. That's yes. a lot. Yep. Wow. So we got power to rate ratio is where we really are able to excel. Um, long races, towards the end of the race, we start to fade a little faster than the other big cars because, like I said, we're a little more fragile in a, in a sense, but. Kevin built such an awesome car. He's eight, we're able to push this thing all day. Very so. cool. Have you ever run this race before? Uh, yes, in a smaller class. Okay, so this is your first year in the buggy category. Yeah. How about what's your what's your win loss record out here in uh, Best in the Desert? How many times have you? I raced it once and I won it. You raced. So, wow. Uh, hopefully we can take the whole weekend and get the overall this weekend. That'd be the coolest. You won thing. this one in what class? Uh, 2400. So you won it in 2400. Excellent. Yeah. Good luck, man. Thank you. We can't, it's going to be a tough one out there yeah. with these trucks. You got the yeah. trucks talking any smack on you at all? That you oh, talk? they always talk smack on the buggies. Uh, really, we're just here. We're here to make a statement. The, the buggy class, we're starting to die a little, and the trucks don't think we're able to do it. So we're kind of in the phase of we're here to put on a show and show them what we can do. Good luck. Thank you. James Dean just told me that this course can be punishing. It's got a lot of whoops, a lot of rough sections, highway crossings, and drop-offs. You really got to be on your toes to get through this course.
course. He said there's no way these guys could last 500 miles like this. Pace. It's a spread. Here with the one and only George Anto, longtime veteran of Best in the Desert. How you doing, George? Good. How you doing, man? Glad to have you guys here at Lucas Oil. Okay. I'm excited to be here. Fill me in on this race. It's so unique. To me, it really stands out and uh, sets itself apart from the other Best in the Desert races. It's a very short sprint. Tell me a little bit about it. Yeah, you know, t Saturday and Sunday will run two days of racing, so they take their points from Saturday and add them to Sunday, and that's how the overall winner will win. So, you know, you could do good on Saturday, and then maybe you don't do as good on Sunday, so that can kind of hurt you in the overall. But it's, it's only like an hour race each day, but uh, like you said, it is like a sprint, and uh, they run really hard for one hour, and then they're done. You know, it's pretty cool. My question is, from a best in the desert standpoint, most of the races we see are marathons. So why why do they have this sprint? Is it to, to test the versatility of the drivers? What, what do you think? Well, we have in our series we've been putting on for years. We have what they call a desert challenge. So it's it's like we used to put this on in in Parker, Arizona, a two day event. Now we brought it up here to Laughlin, and then Saturday night we're going to have Laughlin League. So we'll have that going on Saturday night also. How about the course itself? I'm hearing it's very challenging. What do you know about the course? It is very rough, very challenging. You know, the UTV guys raced there last night on Thursday and kind of tore it up pretty good. But uh, it is probably one of the roughest courses we have. I mean, even though it's only like 20 miles long, it's really rough. How about the history here with Best in the Desert? I know, was, was, this, was this one of the favorite races of Casey? Did he love this race? No, I mean, Casey, I, I, most famous race, Vegas Torino. Vegas Torino, we know he loved that one. Yeah, and Parker 425, always a, his one of his best. Um, we just it, we finally got invited back from La Laughlin Tourism, and it really made it pretty cool. We like putting the race on down here, you know. Is this is this a huge deal for the Laughlin Chamber of Commerce and everybody with the amount of traffic you guys bring in? Yeah, very good for the tourism down here. I mean, you got all these hotels, all this stuff, and the town gets. They go crazy over it, so it's pretty cool. That is very cool. Uh, anything else you'd like to add about this event? Anything that's interesting that that you've admired over the years? Well, you know, I've done this race for many years. I worked for SCORE down here when they did it back in 2005. You know, during the, that period of time, SCORE was running the races down here the same way we are right now. So we were happy once they left and just they're concentrating on the Baja stuff. Now we're able to put this race in our series. Pretty cool. What's the key to winning this thing? Um, I'll tell you what. Probably just keeping your car together, not trying to break it, you know, because a lot of guys go really fast in that sprint and you break. If you break and you're out just for a minute or two, you're going to lose the race, you know. You got to so keep it together. The guys, they do pick up the pace a little bit, but it's key not to wear out the vehicle. Exactly, because, you, all, you know, if you're down for one or two minutes, you're going to lose the race for that day because it's not like Vegas Torino where you're racing for eight hours, you know. That's true, not much time to make up for mistakes. Yeah. Awesome, man. Appreciate yeah, it. We'll no enjoy problem. the show. I'll put you on the spot. You going to pick yeah. a winner? Um, I'm going to say Brett Serapis. He won last year here. He, he knows I think how to get it done. He knows how to do it. I think he did it last year. And I think he's going to do it again. Thanks so much for the info. All right. You take it easy. Sam Barry, here we are again. I think of this race and I think about the battle between you and Dean last year. What's changed this year? What are your thoughts? Well, this year I think I'm going to go against his boy. And his boy's uh, he's a ball of fire. He does a good job. He really does. Uh, um, but, you know, you got to get to the finish line to first finish. Now, so, re refresh my memory of what happened last year. And what did you learn about this course last year? Um, the course is a neat course. It gets rougher each and every lap. Every lap is a little different because it is a little shorter. So, with, you get a lot of cars and, and a lot of people running the track. It changes constantly. And of course, it changes rougher and rougher and rougher. So the, the course will start out fair and get extremely rough as we go. So one thing that we learned last year is you got to be consistent. Like Pat did last year did not finish. Um, I, had a, I had a blowout tire trying to pass Pat on a turn, on the inside turn, and he clipped a rock. And I went down a little bit, and we were in the makeup, you know, chase him down. But then he had a problem, we finished, we took over the point lead, and then we went to the last one and gave it back to him. So it's it's neat when it's that close. It's, it's Where awesome. Where are you at in the points this year? Second. Second, okay, Sam. Yeah. How old are you? Uh, 65. From? Uh, Murphy's, California. How long have you been doing this? Uh, probably pushing about 38 years. Excellent. What are your hobbies outside of racing? Um, my hobby is racing, and then outside I do a lot of uh, towing and heavy haul. Very cool.
Now, you're the only driver that does this alone. You told me last time you don't like anybody hollering at you out there. Is that, is that the true reason why you're in there alone? Um, and I drive a little different. I have drove for a lot of other people. And it seems like when I have somebody in that other seat, I may not come up through the dust like I would if I was by myself. And so it's a, it's a little different. Uh, I'm getting up to age. We're climbing out and changing that flat tire. It's got different thoughts in my mind. Uh, I was running a Razor uh, last night. I had a, a co-rider in there. And uh, it is kind of nice. If you have a problem, get out and fix it. <laughs> That's right. But uh, I do enjoy running uh, completely by myself. And uh, got nobody to tell on me when I make mistakes unless a pitcher shows up someplace. But um, we have a lot of fun doing it. Good luck to you, man. Thank Absolutely you. Absolutely love it. Let's see. Oh, what do we got there? Sam, you're going to pass your tech inspection today. Can I get your autograph, please? <laughs> you passed your tech inspection. How ah, great is that? Now, awesome. what, what are you guys looking for here in tech? When We're tech after all the safety features. Make sure that he's going to be safe out on the race course if something goes terribly wrong. What are the main safety features you're looking for? The date, how old the seat belts are, the condition of the seat belts, window nets, lights, fire extinguishers, first aid kit. Driver's suit, helmet, make sure all of that is up to date and that Sam's safe out there. We want to see him again tomorrow. How old are the seat belts allowed they, to be? The seat belts have a three year lifetime warranty. Suits and helmets have a total of 10 years. Okay, excellent. Well, congratulations, you're all safe out there. Last thing I have for you, you're getting up there. You're not showing any signs of slowing down though whatsoever. You are doing a great job. We, we see what's happening over the Dean camp where the youngster's taking over. Do you have plans to keep doing this for a long time, or are you going to also groom a young man to take over? Absolutely. I'm going to keep right on getting in here until I can't get in here anymore. And I've told these guys that I may have to go to a two-seat now to put me in, but I plan on keep right on doing it until I can't do it anymore. Um, we're just we're, we're having so much fun doing it. Keep on keeping on, my man. Good right. luck. Old trucks never die if you treat them right. We told you Lucas Oil will keep your engine alive here with my man, Tracy. Tracy, how many miles you got on this 1998 1500? 407,000 miles on this truck. How many miles when you bought it? 100,000 miles were on it when I bought it. Nobody had serviced the transmission. So I went ahead and uh, removed some oil out of the transmission, put Lucas stop slip in it, did that annually, and got another 300 and some odd thousand miles out of the transmission. Amazing. And it's still going now. <laughs> how satisfied are you with that longevity? Excellent because it saves you, saves you a lot of money for, for that bottle of magic. I'm sure this truck has taken you to a lot of races and it doesn't look like you plan on retiring it anytime soon. What's the future plan? No, sir, I'm gonna drive it till the wheels fall off and maybe I'll even bolt them back on and keep going. How about that? Thank you so much, man. We uh -huh. appreciate it. Take a look, guys. Lucas Oil Products, keeping this four horse alive. Team Rat Hole Drilling getting ready. We got the unlimited trophy truck. We got the 6100 truck. What's your name, sir? Gary Mills. Excellent, where are you out of? Texas. Two truck team, that's gotta be rigorous. Tell me a little bit about it. Oh, it's awesome. Uh, typically my two sons drive the two trucks and uh, we've been doing this since the uh, latter part of 2012. And uh, at one time they both drove spec trucks, both of my sons, but I, I, back in 15, I decided to step up to trophy truck and to get them out of the out of the same class is that so. a, a pretty big burden financially to step up to that class compared to spec oh yeah oh absolutely yeah absolutely. once you go unlimited it's crazy huh yeah 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 it's uh it costs a big chunk of money to do this every year talking about your 6100 truck you guys come in fourth in points where'd you qualify fifth fifth okay so you got an opportunity to make a move up in the points what are your thoughts on that yeah, hopefully we'll have a good race. Uh, I don't wish anything bad on the, the guys in front of us in points, but if they have a hiccup at DNF, then uh, uh, that would be help. That'll be helpful to us. But uh, it's it's uh, the top four out of the top five in points sitting in points right now for the year are all are all starting together. So. Uh, We'll see how it goes. This is such a different race in terms of philosophy with it being shorter. Uh, what what changes in terms of your son's driving strategy? Well, you just have to go for it. I mean, it's 64 miles is all. And so you you can't lag back. And, you know, it's not like a, you know, a 250 or four or 500 mile race like Vegas Torino. You just have to go for it and uh, see what happens. You, you, can't, you can't sit back and wait for a lot of the other trucks to have problems or whatever so you just have to go for it anything change on your setup because of that no so no setups exactly like we were going to vegas arena yes sir excellent so just smash that gas and 
hope everything stays together. Yes, huh? sir. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It's all. Uh, I told my sons years ago. Half of it's the prep on the truck, and the and the and them as drivers, and the other half's lady luck. You always have to have that late lady luck with you. How much time do you guys spend prepping these trucks back at your shop? Oh, they spend a lot of time. I have an 11,000 square foot race shop in Phoenix. Okay. And I've got three or four people on the payroll, and that's all they do is tear the trucks down after every race and go through everything and replace stuff and put them all back together. How many hours do you think you have in a, a unlimited and a, and a spec after a race to get it ready? Oh, I really don't know. Actually, Bart, my runs, this young man here runs my race team. He knows more about that than I do, but it, it takes a lot of hours. It, it takes... I don't know. I'm guessing it could take a hundred hours. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. Well, good luck to you. Anything else you'd like to add about this weekend? No, sir. I appreciate your time and uh, uh, I hope everything goes well and we're looking forward to a good race. Good luck. We'll see you guys out there. Thank you. Well, let's ask this fine gentleman. Excuse me, sir. Bart. I have Howdy. one question for you, Mr. Bart. Right. I understand you are one of the talented guys in the race shop, right? Yes, sir. About how many hours do we have into these trucks after a race like Vegas Torino to get them ready? Oh, each truck. I said a hundred. Yeah, I mean, well, we work full five days a week, uh, eight, eight, nine hours a day at least on them. Uh, at least one person on each truck. So, what are some of the most time-consuming jobs after a race to rebuild, repair? Um, the most time-consuming stuff is when there's structural damage to the trucks. Um, both trucks last time had just minor scuffs on them, but involved cutting tubes out of the chassis and replacing them. Um, that takes a lot of time. And Does it then, come down to the frame, or do you usually leave the motor in it? Uh, for a quick turnaround like this, the motor stays in. Everything else will come out uh, for the most part. Uh, transmissions get replaced, diffs get replaced, suspension comp uh, components get rebuilt. Wow. New Himes, Uniballs, shocks get rebuilt every time that's quite a bit of money to overhaul these trucks isn't it yeah it's not cheap excellent and how much do you just love working in the shops and a labor of love for you yeah it is it's it's uh it's challenging it's fun it's always different as a guy in the shop when you know you're going to come out here and these trucks are going to be put to the test and they have the potential to fail what are some of the most important checks that, that you make to make sure they're durable enough um the most important thing is just making sure that you're thorough, consistent, and that you have a system. So nothing gets overlooked, nothing gets missed, nothing gets left loose. Um, so I'm we, sure even some of the smaller, easier things to overlook can leave you stranded, right? Oh yeah, for sure. So you, the smallest, uh, nine times out of 10, you're gonna have an issue. It's probably either a component, you didn't rebuild yourself, or you didn't build yourself, you know, some a vendor, whatever issue, or some silly little, three cent bolt came loose and ruined your race amazing any uh, any different prep for this race at all since it's a shorter race and um actually and a little bit less than normal because no matter what you're coming back from this race and everything's just trashed so well, this race trashes it yeah so why is it because the course is so rough yeah it's rough they go they're driving hard because it's a sprint and uh so all the himes and uniballs are going to come back just completely clapped out Either way, so you Vegas said, Torino is actually fairly easy on it. The uniballs and what? I'm sorry. Himes. Wow. So the, all the suspension pivot points. So a lot of we'll let some of it go from Vegas Torino because Vegas Torino is fairly easy on most of that stuff. It's a very fairly smooth course, and then we come here with some slightly worn stuff because we could put new stuff in or we could let the old stuff ride. And either way, it's coming back destroyed. It's so. crazy. Well, good luck to you guys, man. Right, Thanks thank for you. the info. There he is. He oh, there he is. Bumble we got the truck. driver here. How you doing, sir? What's your name? Good. Taylor Mills. How Excellent. are you? Excellent. Let me get you in the sun over here. Perfect. Which one will you be driving? I'm going to be driving the 6100. Awesome. I've been racing the trophy truck the last few years. Had some issues with it, so I jumped in the spec truck this year. We we're running third at the last race, Vegas Arena. Sold the race, finished the race, had some hang-ups. So now we're running uh, fifth in points. Uh, excuse me, fourth in points, and we're starting fifth at this race. What's the goal here? The goal is to finish this race, win, win both days and uh, see if we can podium or see where the chips fall. I mean, we have an opportunity to possibly win the uh, series if we can play this right and win these races. Love it, man. How old are you? 38. How long have you been driving? Uh, since 2011. Where are you from? Texas. Hobbies outside of racing? Power boats. Power boats? Power boats, yeah. We got a 44 MTI, do poker run series. 
have a lot of fun doing that as well. How would you compare this to power boat racing? There's no comparison. Off-road's the best. I've heard that from so many guys. Yeah. In Vegas Torino, a lot of drivers told me this is the most fun we have all year. Absolutely. This off-road racing is the limit to what you can do. Is I got cool? about 180 miles an hour in a boat in offshore racing, offshore poker runs. It doesn't compare at all to this. This is real. This is some real deal shit. That's awesome. How about the fact that you get spectators out here since it's a little bit more of a spectator friendly race? This is a great race. A lot of people think 60 miles each day is a, it's a quick race. We got to really get in there and get it done. The fact of the matter is 60 miles is a long way. This is a rough race. It's, uh, if it's windy, if it's not, dust, not. I mean, this is, we've had, a lot of people don't finish this race. And I think we'll see that again this year. Good luck to you, man. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. All right, here we go. We got all the lovely ladies of CS Racing. Guys, are you pumped up for a big weekend here? We are so excited. I love it. I love it. How about you? <laughs> yeah, super pumped. Now, talk to me. How long have your husbands been desert racing? Uh, that would be her probably. <laughs> how long? Over 15 years. Over 15 years. Yeah, involved in the sport, yeah. For that, over that's 15 awesome. Years. What's the feeling when you come out as a wife? Are you nervous for him? Are you excited? I get more excited. I usually, the adrenaline doesn't kick in until after the race starts, but before, I usually keep it together. You guys go to a lot of races each year? Yes, we do. So here's what makes Laughlin so much different is they say it's the best spectator track. It's instead of one big lap, it's four laps. You guys feel like you get a, a much better view? Yes, I'm excited to be here. This is my first time being in Laughlin. So how about you? Yes, I think that the infield, it's a great race for the spectators because you actually get to see them go by more than one time. So it's a great spectator race. Okay. Makes the day go by a lot quicker when you're not just in the middle of the desert waiting to see something all day. <laughs> And the final thing, race life. I know your husbands live for this. What, what's that like? Are they consumed by this? Are you okay with that? I'm okay with it because I love the sport too, but yes, it definitely takes up a lot of your time. So it's something you guys can enjoy together. Yes, it's a great have, family sport. They have a mistress. And That's it's, what we do. It's the truck. The mistress. <laughs> the truck's name is the mistress. Does that cause any jealousy or is that okay? It's okay. <laughs> That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool you let them do it. Are you having fun? That's the key. Awesome, guys. <laughs> well, good luck to your team this weekend. Thank you. 6147, how you doing, sir? Pretty good, pretty good. How about yourself? Good, what's your full name? Kevin Shields. Excellent, you got your brother here? My brother, Scott Shields, over there. He's uh, he's the owner. It's uh, Co-driver? It's yep, so we uh, we actually trade seats. So I'll drive, uh, I qualified, I'll drive tomorrow, and then he'll drive on Sunday, and I'll, I'll co-drive for him. Where are you guys out of? We're out of San Diego, uh, El Cajon. I'm out of Bonita, South Bay, San Diego. We just talked to all the wives over there. They're pumped up. How fun is it to be out here with your whole family? It's exciting. This is one of our favorite races, strictly uh, strictly for that. You know, we can have all the family, the parents, the kids, the dogs. We get to camp on the race course, um, you know, two minutes away from the hotel. So it's a it's a cool race for, for everybody else that's the behind the scenes for what helps us get out here. It's they don't always, right? it's convenient and they're, you know, they're the ones that are normally out chasing us through the middle of the desert, getting out to all these random middle of nowhere spots and waiting for us all day to come through and do a one minute pit and send us on our way. So this is cool for all of them to be able to be right there on the race course, seeing us come by, you know, four times each day. And it's uh, it's one of our favorite races. The course is awesome and it's a shorter race. So being able to go out there and sprint and battle around door to door with all these guys is a blast. Love it. What's the key to winning this race? Key to winning this race is driving as hard as you possibly can and keeping the truck together. It's such a short race, you know, one flat tire, anything like that is, uh, is takes you out of contention for the win. So you gotta be balls to the wall and, uh, and try to keep the truck together. It's kind of a hold on and go for the ride for this one. It's hang everything out there. There's, there's no reservations for this race. Well, I know you got your crew cheering you on. Good luck to you. Thank you, guys. Take awesome. care. Driving the 6100 class with uh, yeah. excellent uh, Peck. 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 Sorry. Yeah. So I'm gonna drive that both days this, this weekend too. Ray Griff, double duty this weekend. Big story is you qualified number one last year. You had a DNF in the buggy category. Number two this year. What exactly have you changed on this vehicle? Uh, we changed a little bit of everything. We we made the steering better. We made the suspension better. We put bigger King shocks on it. Uh, we got a bigger. Redline performance engine in it, a little more power. Uh, this is a short race, so the power definitely comes in in key when we're trying to run guys down and uh, squeeze every little bit out of it that we can. What caused the DNF last year? Uh, we actually we, we had we had an engine failure, um, just kind of a fluke thing too. Like I said, uh, everything everything was good, and three corners in, just a just a part failure in, internal, and uh, it was kind of. So, 
like I said, an internal part, and it ended our weekend really quick. So that was a bummer, but now uh, we played it a little conservative qualifying um, just to make sure we had a really good car for race day. So I think we, we got that this, this year. And you said you're looking forward to not being the first out there, right? Maybe get to follow some guys? Yeah, I mean, I, I never really like to say that because I always want to be first, you know, but yeah, I, I actually am. I'm, I'm going to let him be, be the hair. I'm just going to chase him. I, I know if I put enough pressure, he's going to make mistakes, and once he makes mistakes, that's where I'm going to capitalize on him, and as soon as I get past him, I'm going to run my own race, and he's got to pass me back to, to win. So. What are your thoughts on pulling double duty and also running 6100? That's got to take a toll on you, right? Yeah, it does. I mean, even yesterday, we had a, a hiccup in qualifying because uh, the 6100 qualified before the Class 1 car and kicked a belt and knocked a water line off, which was kind of fluke, too, and uh, I barely got back in time to qualify the Class 1 car. So the 1500 car, I, I literally was out of breath running through the desert to get to it by the time I, I got into it to qualify. So there's always that factor too, but it, thankfully during the race, we're racing the class one car first and the 61 after. So class one car is obviously our main concern and we're gonna be starting dead last in the 6100. So we're gonna have a lot of, uh, a lot of traffic to get through. Um, How old are you? 31. Out of, where are you from? Downey, California. Okay. What are your hobbies outside of racing? <laughs> just, just pretty much. Uh, I mean, we go to the river, go boating, go uh, just different stuff like that. But honestly, it's mainly work. Where do you work? Uh, we have a family construction company. We do chain link and iron fencing, and we got a race shop in the back. So after work, it's prep these race cars. So it, it's, days, it's full time. Huh? That's it. It's full time, and we're uh, we got, we do it all ourselves. So. We don't got no big team, no big crew, but we're out here trying to trying to stay up front with those big guys. Good luck, you bud. Right on, thank you. Justin, how you doing? Doing awesome, man. How are you? Good. Riding with Ray, right? Yes, sir. Perfect. So, uh, what day will you be driving? Uh, I'm going to be willing on day two on Sunday. We're going to try to bomb through the, the back of the field. Um, we had a small issue on qualifying, so we're starting last, dead last. But it will give us uh, some fun running up into the front. Nice. How old are you, Justin? <laughs> I'm 47. Perfect. Where are you from? Uh, Utah. How would you describe how much fun this is out here? It is, uh, it's like being in a shotgun fight in a closet, man. It is the best thing ever. <laughs> it's amazing. What's the strategy? Uh, strategy is to uh, not break first off like you want to keep the truck together but have that right pedal down as far as it can go the entire race how do you and Ray Griffith know each other Ray Ray and I have been friends for geez a long time we race short course together We've done um, he's just he's been probably one of my best friends for God, probably eight years now so he's a good kid good luck to you guys thanks man appreciate it 61 49 let me do some damage All the media pros getting ready for this extravaganza. Jason here from Race Desert. Jason, how you doing? Good, how you doing? Good, man. I know you've been coming to this race for a long time. You were telling me about that road crossing. Yep. Tell me a little bit about what makes this race so special. Well, it's been, it has a long history. Um, I think the first time I came here was 2003, so it's been a long time. Wow, you really um, have been coming here a long time. Yeah, that road crossing is probably the kind of iconic spot. You see a lot of history there, and it's just people going 100 miles an hour, hitting the road crossing, clearing it. I even hitting the road in the dirt. It's it's pretty exciting. That is cool. What do you what do you think makes this race stand apart? I mean, aside from the fact that it's it's so short, from a driver's standpoint, how do they prepare for something that's so different than Vegas to Reno or these other marathons? Yeah, it's definitely it's it's a sprint race, um, which for photos wise, it's exciting because they're 110 percent the whole time. So they're just going back, blasting the current corners and jumping and stuff, so it's pretty cool. Cool, man. Anything else you'd like to add about this race? You've been coming here since 03. How have you seen it change? Is it getting bigger? No, no. It's, it's, uh, it's you know, it has a long history. Um, you know, I think we have 22 trick trucks. Um, in the days, it's been about 30 or 40. Um, but it's still an exciting race, and it's it's good for spectators to come to. It's right by the town, so it's, it's a whole lot of fun to come to. Where would you rank this in your favorite best of the desert race? Um, probably... Fourth. Okay. <laughs> there's, a lot of, yeah. there's a lot of good yeah. ones out yeah, there's there. No, there's no silt out here. That's my bit. So there's no silt. It's 
it's kind of on the, on the bottom, but tell it's still little, so fun. Tell me a little bit more about track conditions since you know so much about it. You, 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 got, the, you got the big jump over the road. Mm -hmm. How about, you know anything about the proving grounds? Yeah, it's a, it's a rough section. Um, there's like two or three lines, then it kind of widens into a, a tight ridge section. Um, so it's definitely a tough section. Um, but I know it's this race is always really dusty, especially with the wind. It dries the track out. So it's always a dusty race, and people that start first definitely have an advantage just because they're seeing clean air. But I think the wind will help with the dust. It'll help clear it out. It's going to make it work. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if it stays how it is now, it, it'll help people in the back for sure. Um, it just depends on which way is the wind going, if it's coming at you. So hopefully the wind dies down, though. But it's like giving you a little bit to clear the dust. So. Thank you for the info, sir. Enjoy your race. Yeah, thank you. Kyle Jorgensen coming off a big win in Vegas to Reno here with Jerry Zayden, team owner. Jerry, what's the mindset coming into a shorter and more technical category here? Yeah, you know, Kyle did an amazing job. He qualified number one spot at Vegas to Reno. Basically led the race all day, beat second place by a half an hour. You know, our goal was to see how far we could finish up into the trick trucks here. And these general X3 grabbers, I mean, they really help with traction. We had zero flats at Vegas to Reno. Yesterday, Kyle qualified the truck. He made a little mistake overshooting a berm, kind of went up and over it. Uh, we lost the number one spot by three seconds, but we did beat our general tire teammate by 15 seconds, Travis Chase, in the qualifying. Um, it's going to be a really cool, good, it's going to be a really good all out battle tomorrow. Um, this is, you know, kind of short course of the desert, I guess you could say. Uh, four laps, 16 miles a lap, so it's about 65 miles a day, and it's just all out. You know, these guys are going to be hammered down from the start, and it's just game on. And the other really cool thing about our class is that we don't have anyone starting in front of us. And that happens all the time at these other races where you got the trick trucks qualifying, and some of the slower guys, they're not even as fast as what we're doing. So tomorrow, it's like we're only going to be catching lap traffic by the third lap. Amazing. What's it going to take to get Hager? Hager's been hot. We just saw him win in short course. You guys feel like you can, you can get up there and, and put some heat on him? Oh, absolutely. You know, like I said, at Vegas Torino, we're putting putting uh, some time on everybody. Uh, but not, not to downplay Hager, the kid's got a lot of talent. You know, he's one of the up-and-coming stars in this world. Um, obviously very proven already. He's doing a great job. Uh, Kyle Jurgensen, very underrated driver. Uh, same thing, as a, as a young gun, he was qualifying first in his 1500 car, which to you guys out there, uh, 1500 cars, the unlimited buggies, and he was qualifying number one spot against all the trick trucks, all the buggies, everything. I think he was like 17 years old or something. So, you know, he's got a lot of experience. He's very calculated, extremely smooth, very calm, uh, very well composed. And I, I think he's gonna do a really good job out there. Uh, the truck's phenomenal right now. And uh, like I said, these X3 mud terrain tires are hooking up. This is the same tires that we run on all of our Raptors and Chase trucks and everything, and they're awesome tires. So I Good think it's stuff. gonna be a big advantage for us. Where are you out of, Jerry? We're in Huntington Beach, California. Excellent, how old are you? you gotta ask that question. <laughs> how old do I look? Uh, very young, <laughs> incredibly young. I'm very young. I'm, all right, out of Team Camberg. Yep. Tell me a little bit about Camberg. I know everybody talks about the Camberg Award and how important it is. Yeah, so at Camberg, uh, we've been around now 22 years. We started in 97, Jason Campbell and I. Um, you know, we've been racing for over 20 years. Um, our kids will be out here also racing. Uh, they're in the Ford Ranger that's behind here. It's a V8 power truck. They're in the sportsman class. They're getting their feet wet. So we have 16 through 19 years old. Um, Jason Campbell's two boys, my son, Zach. Uh, so one kid's going to race one day, the next kid's going to go off the leap, and uh, the other kid will race on Sunday. Just getting their feet wet, having some fun, um, you know, we build off-road truck suspension, we do machining, we're building the kinetic trucks here. Um, I think we're up to like over 17, 18 trucks now. Um, just a lot of fun, just manufacture, we're basically like a giant hobby shop, living the dream, having fun, and getting a lot of good opportunities. How special and respected is the Camberg Award that you give out? Yeah, so we also do the Camberg Award. I, I feel the award is really the true over, well, I feel the award's really the true award for the overall fastest racer of the year. So what the Camberg Award represents is the fastest racer over every mile of every race. That means you're not DNFing. That means you're moving faster from the first mile to 2,000 plus miles by the end of the year. Who averaged the fastest mile per hour all year? That's the guy who gets the 
Mike Hamburg Award. It's like the MVP or the Con Smythe for off-road racing. It's pretty impressive. Right? Absolutely. You know, we got a few guys up there who won it multiple times. You got Jason Voss, you got Steve Oligas, uh, the late Steve Apple. Uh, he was the guy to win it the first year. Um, yeah, so I mean, it's a really cool award. And you said there's potential that you may drive this weekend, right? There's potential. I mean, if, if I'm driving, it's for fun because we didn't do very well on day one, but I don't think we'll be in that situation. Uh, the truck will be at the SEMA show in Las Vegas, and after that, I'm taking it out to Glamis to go jump it and have some fun with it. I actually prefer doing that now. Um, and then next year, I'll be doing a few races with Jason in it as well. Excellent. We got the LS3 and the 37-inch tires. That's what makes 6100, right? Absolutely. Love it, man. Thanks so much. All right, thank you. Tight championship battle coming in the 6100 category. We have back there Adam Raylon and RJ Anderson. And right here, the young gun, the rookie of the year candidate, the always consistent Brock Hager. Brock, you're coming in nursing a three-point lead. Are you nervous at all? Is there pressure? How are you approaching this? You know, there's a little bit of pressure. I mean, we've uh, we've worked all year to kind of put ourselves in this spot. I wish it was wish it was a little bit more points than three, but, you know, it's part of the game. And at this point, it's, um, you know, the field's super tight. But, um, you know, we've worked all year for this and kind of came down to this last race. And I think um, I think we have we have it. I think uh, we have a good truck. You know, the guys have been working super hard on trying to give me a flawless truck. And they've done that. So it's um, it's up to me and hopefully I don't screw it up. What happened in Vegas Torino that caused you guys to finish last? Um, what didn't happen in Vegas Torino? That's pretty much how I look at it. But, um, you know, it started with me trying to hit a trophy truck to pass them. I went under them, tore all the shock reservoirs off. So that was the first one. Um, then we had another issue. We had a drive shaft. Um, the bearing went out and in or whatever and um, had to change that at one of the pits. And then I handed it off to Eric. He drove the last half and he got stuck in a canyon. So we had to wait for a rescue to come pull him out. And um, then we ended up finishing, so that was good. But um, it wasn't nowhere near where, where we wanted to finish. You're still able to salvage some points, though, right? If you wouldn't have finished, I, I think you would have lost the points lead, right? Yeah, if I were not to finish, the points lead would have been uh, very tough. So. It's good we finished and you know we come in here three points ahead and um, you know we're just gonna do our thing and hopefully it all plays out in our favor. Do a great job in the off-road series, the short course series. This is the shorter race for Best in the Desert. How would you compare this to a pro light race? Is there any comparison? Um, no, not really. You know, you know, pro light races are pretty hectic. There's carnage everywhere all the time and um, you know, these trucks, um, you don't really see a bunch of door banging and stuff. So. You know, I think it's going to come down to just a lot of tight racing and there's so many turns out here and it's a uh, it's short loop race and it's a sprint so I think um, I think that's where I'm going to have my advantage is it being a sprint race so we'll see how it goes and um, hopefully it plays out in our favor. Well that's where I think you really may have an advantage because I've talked to a lot of desert racers and they're telling me there's no time to rest, throttle down, hammer down compared to what you're used to on a short course. Yeah, I mean yeah. That, this is less probably less intense for you right yeah no i think this is just more like normal this is how um i wish every desert race were, was where you know the equipment can withstand anything but unfortunately that's not how it goes and you know this race is kind of the closest it gets to being able to just go for it perfect how old are you 19. how many years you been racing <clears throat> since i was seven seven my goodness so a long time hobbies outside of racing um hanging out with friends family and um you know going on the river stuff like that going to the desert and uh just having fun where are you from el centro el centro you got your your desert. girlfriend here cheering you on how how great is that she gets she comes with you a lot doesn't she yeah she pretty much strolls around with me at all these races and um you know, that's what's fun about it do you like traveling with brock to all races i do it's how about, a lot of fun what do you think about this one here in laughlin uh, this is my first desert race so i'm excited to be out here it's a different experience for sure than short course. First desert race for your girlfriend, no pressure there, huh, Brock? That yeah, might be I'm more stressful than it. being in the points lead, huh? Yeah, I'm not too stressed about it. There you go. Good luck. Thank you. Adam Ray Lund getting ready to go. What an intense battle between you and Brock Hager. Double points this weekend. You trail by three. What's your mindset heading in? Well, for us, it's uh, it's pretty simple. I mean, we got to beat him. Um, it's winner take all here. And, you know, that's. We don't really care about second, RJ or I, it's first or nothing is pretty much our mentality. So we're going to run this thing as hard as it'll go and give it everything it's got and hope to get around Brock. We missed our setup a little bit in qualifying. What uh, was off on the setup, you think? I gearing. Uh, okay. We had a different qualifying course than we normally do out here, and we kind of geared it expecting the norm and uh, had a lot more top end than we were expecting. 
Um, so I don't think the setup was as good as it could have been. No. RJ qualified. He made the best of it. Um, still ended up four, so it'll be a second row start. So we'll be 15 seconds um, behind Brock starting on the second row. And uh, plan tomorrow is to just pace him for the first couple laps and see if we can follow him in on the bumper and get him on time. And then day two, the start will uh, invert. And then hopefully we can uh, start out front day two. Just keep them behind us and get that championship. Murphy, how old are you, Adam? I'm 35. From? Uh, Wichita Falls, Texas. Hobbies outside of racing? Play golf a little bit, but this is pretty much it. I mean, it pretty much is all consuming. Uh, running the team, I'm, I'm the team owner, so in addition to driving, I'm chasing sponsorship, making sure the thing gets prepped, transported out here. You know, it's a, it's pretty much a full time plus some, but when I do get some free time, I like to go to the lake, play some golf. How'd you get hooked up with RJ? Uh, actually, it was uh, kind of a funny story, pretty much just Instagram. Um, I come from a rock crawling background, and years ago, his dad was uh, was with Walker Evans doing the rock crawling stuff, so I've kind of known his dad for a while, and uh, I had my hand hurt coming into this race last year where I wasn't able to drive, and with it being a short course format, I was like, man, let's get a short course guy. I think it'd be an advantage. So I reached out to RJ, and it was just a good fit. We get along, and kind of stuck so then we just decided let's just partner up and we split all the driving um, in the races that's what we've been doing all year I drove except for Silver State he had obligations there so I drove uh, all of Silver State but otherwise we just pretty much split him down the middle how many championships have you won none wow so to be this close to your first ever championship I mean does it give you butterflies it does it does it's hard to sleep right now it's hard to think about anything else and it's you know it's to be so close but I mean it's Beating Brock's no easy task, as anybody will tell you. He's a hell of a driver, and it's going to be a battle. But, you know, I got a good feeling, and, you know, it's it's cool to see all the work come together. And the truck's there, our driving's there, our crew's there, and, you know, the sponsors that allow us to do it. We got the funding to, to run up front now. And so it's just cool to see everything mesh and come together. And I'm hoping it's, it's going to be the weekend. We're talking to Brock about how he may have an advantage because he's a short course racer, right? And it's going to be a shorter track. But you got a short course racer next to you too. Do you, does that give you a little confidence? It does. It does. This is definitely RJ's jam. He's just like Brock. I mean, they, they're short course guys first, desert second. So I mean, it's going to be it's going to be a battle between two short course guys, and we'll see what happens on uh, day one, and then we'll make a decision on whether I'll drive or RJ based on how day one goes. Um, Love it, man. Wish you the best. Absolutely. Thank you. Team General Tire, the realist, as he just called himself moments ago. The reason you're the realist is because if you finish this race, CJ Hutchins, due to the great lead you build up, you win. You qualify third, and you were telling me moments ago, you may not be gunning for the victory here. You're gunning for the championship. Tell me about it. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's been a long season. We fought hard to, to put ourselves in this position to be leading the points right now. So it's it's a tough race here. It's a, it's definitely a sprint race where you have to drive as hard as you can, but I, I got to make sure I get this general tire car to the finish and win this championship. So it's a, definitely a balancing act we have going on. James was showing me his ultra light chassis. You have a different chassis set up that you said maybe is even a little bit more durable. Show me about what's different with your chassis. Yeah, um, our car is definitely heavier than James's car. He probably has one of the lighter cars here um, in class one. We just have heavier duty arms. Uh, the chassis overall is bigger. Um, and our car is not even one of the biggest cars out here. So there's still cars that weigh quite a bit more than ours, but it's going to be a good time. And uh, James will be tough. That lightweight car is going to be fast. There's no doubt about it. Why do you think you guys were able to get so hot here at the end of the year, winning Silver State and winning Vegas Arena? Uh, we, we've put a lot of work into this team. Everybody from uh, Jake's Fab Works, who, who preps the car and maintains everything, to our manager, Zach Jorgensen in Vegas, um, putting it all together. It, it really takes a lot of people and a lot of different components to come together and work perfectly. And uh, everything just really came together good this year. We got a podium at the Mint and two wins, and we're here at the last race, so hopefully get another podium, and if not a win, be a great way to wrap this year up. How many championships have you won your career again? 
we have won two snore championships and one score championship. So this would kind of wrap up the, the three big organizations to be able to say I've won a championship in all three organizations would be really cool. How important is it to you and what would it mean to you to come away with that number one plate? Yeah, it would be awesome. You know, we've, we've tried for several years to win this championship and it's not easy to uh, finish these real big long races that Best in the Desert puts on. So you really have to find that balance of taking care of the car and making sure you get to the finish with, with having the speed to stay out front. Um, and I think we just did a really good job with that this year. Perfect. How old are you again? I am 34. Out of? What's that? Out of, where are you from again? Las Vegas, Nevada. Las Vegas, Nevada. And I understand you brought the good luck kitty here. This oh yeah, the, the kitty's here. So uh, Tell me about your cat again. What, what, <laughs> what, uh, His name is Raja and he's an African serval. So a lot of people don't know about servals, but they're a medium-sized cat that uh, can be raised as a pet um, to live in your home. So you think the kitty could be your good luck charm? I hope so. <laughs> Love it, man. Anything else you'd like to add about this weekend or anything about the course? No, uh, we're, we're ready to go and put this general tire car up front and end up on the podium, hopefully. Good luck to you. Thank you. Take a look at it one more time. That's CJ Hutchins. He's hot right now. Two straight wins. <laughs> you feel like a robot. Typical problem. And got it. And don't the hand. There we go. One more cable. Thank you, sir. General Tire, you having fun? Absolutely. Excellent. We're having a great time. We love it. I love it. And we're giving away a hat here? We are. Let me yes. see. Let's take one more shot at this. Okay. So I got to call my shot, right? Yeah. Go all right, ahead. I'm going, Pick your spot. I'm going uh, all season highway terrain. All right. Thank you. Here we go. Oh, oh I'm always man. so close. Spencer, this is a challenging game. I don't know what to tell you, dude. You just need to practice. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Let, thanks Thank for letting you. me play. He's, he's a little free. He's Raja. Right he's now. been locked up in the trailer. Raja. Oh, wow. <laughs> They're all so noisy. What do you think, Raja? You happy to be here? Kid Stokes, you were living a dream, my friend. Here, let me get on the other side of you. Get oh, some sunny. Show me about this truck and, and tell me the story. You got a great story. Oh man, so this truck we uh, picked up from Alan Fluger a couple months ago, man. It's got a lot of history behind it. Uh, they built it in 2004. It was a Porter truck. Uh, racing pretty competitive. It's got a couple Baja 500 wins under it. Uh, very competitive back in the day. Uh, they spent a lot of uh, you know, time making sure the truck worked right. It uh, last raced in uh, 2014, and it kind of sat here for the last five years. And they, you know, kind of put it up. They wanted it out of the shop to clear up some space. And you know, I talked to them into letting it go for, to me, and we uh, decided to, you know, get it back racing. Very and, cool. uh, went through kind of took the gave it a new look and it ran a black look for a long time renamed her and uh you know ready to put her to the, to this, the this will be the first big yeah. event for you yeah this is actually my uh transition from 30 years of riding dirt bikes to oil so we're excited about that change and going having some fun you think there's some uh, talents there that will help the transition you know i hope so reading terrain i think the, the top one and motor skills, throttle, braking, uh, standard issue stuff. Uh, you know, I, I, I love the dirt. I've grown up in the desert since I was a little kid. And I, you know, I built a lot of tracks for both motocross and off-road. And, uh, you know, this is some levels I wanted to do. And it's pretty exciting to be able to do it for the first time out here at Laughlin. And I uh, it's got a lot of history behind it. What was the highest level you reached in dirt bike racing? You know, I raced the mid 400. I uh, raced the 40 Pro class here in about what, six months ago. Okay. Um, I did okay. I actually Ironman it. It's normally a team race. I just lined up. I hadn't raced in 10 years actually and uh, 
did okay. I actually led that class for about two laps, had a little uh, weed up, uh, had a delay in the pits of about 10 minutes, finished third in class overall, but um, for an Ironman, I think I did okay for not racing for 10 years. Excellent, man. How old are you? 41. And where are you from? Las Vegas, Nevada. Las Vegas. So, I mean, the fact that you're entering your first big race here, it's got to be a dream come true, right? Oh, What's ab your feeling? Ab dude, I'm, uh, I'm ready to do it. I think it's uh, something I've looked at on the sidelines for a long time, and um, it's just time to go do it. You know, it's, it's a dream my father and I had, and uh, he actually died when he was 41, and uh, that, that dream got put on hold for 23 years, so I think it's time to go live it out the, the time that he didn't get to live. So. I'm sure he's uh, smiling on from above. Are oh, you yeah. dedicating this to him? Um, absolutely. Very cool. Excellent, man. Well, thank you for the info. Anything you'd like to add? Oh, man, i uh, just glad to be here and stoked to, to finally be, you know, hopefully, hopefully not banging doors, but having some fun with the guys in four wheels. Good luck to so, you. Thank you. Cool. Hey, Coffee. How you doing? I remember. All right, here with Kit and Stephanie Stokes. You gotta fill me in here. You guys met at a Lucas race? Yeah, we sure did. How many years ago? Uh, six. Six years ago. ago. We met at the uh, September round of uh, Vegas Lucas Oil Off Road in 2013. And it was love at first sight? Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> How much longer after that before you got married? Seven weeks, but we knew pretty much in like two weeks. Seven weeks? That's yeah, incredible. Yeah, I was sitting yeah. in a turn four and he's like, who's that chick eating all that dust over there in the dirt? And uh, his friend's like, she's crazy, I don't know. And uh, he's like, I do want to talk to her. So we start talking and yeah, when you know, you know. Yeah. You know? And uh, we still go back to the races and with KJ and uh, yeah, it's pretty fun. That's awesome. Going on six years, so. Any girl that would uh, eat, eat roost out of turn four, I knew was my kind of girl. <laughs> well, congratulations, guys. You're making the marriage work, and we wish you all the best here in this debut and best in the desert. As, as a race fan, how excited are you? Oh, so excited. It's uh, We've been on the sidelines watching and, and rooting everybody on, and to be kind of um, engulfed in everything and, and to have the fun now, it's, it's awesome. So. Right Can't beat that. You got your wife with you. You got your dog Absolutely. with you. This is lovely. Family affair, it huh? Is. Yes. Thank Good luck. You. Awesome. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you so much. It is the Coors Light Truck. It is your defending champion, Christian Serapis. Christian, qualified third. It's exactly where you qualified last year. Yes, sir. Feeling a little like last year, isn't it? A little bit. So, qualified third, truck's in perfect condition, and we're ready to attack race day. How old are you? 23. Where are you from? San Diego, California. Who's older out of you and your brother? I am by four minutes. Perfect. Four minutes? Four minutes. Wow, you guys are twins. Yeah, I had twin no idea. brothers. That is amazing. So why is your brother not competing this weekend? Uh, He raced the Baja 400. Unfortunately, we had a little bit of bad luck. We weren't even going to plan to race this race, but our Mason Motorsports all-wheel drive was just sitting in the shop and just needed to do a couple things to it and bring it out to defend our win at Laughlin this year. That's right. Tell me about the season. How, how have you finished this? I know you guys have had a very successful season. Has this been the most successful season of your career? Yeah, yes and no. We've made a lot of big strides in our program, but we've also had a few setbacks. So one of our biggest strides was taking our truck to Mexico for the first time and ran out front all day until an unfortunate brake failure took us out of the race. But In the Baja? Yeah, in the Baja 400. So back, good to be back at Laughlin to try and defend this win. Uh, I really like Laughlin. It's really fast and it suits my driving style really well. It's 100% the whole way and I know that I got great people behind me. My dad's funding the pole program once again. He's given me a great truck and great opportunities to succeed. Mason Motorsports, best trophy truck in the game and hopefully it can make a little bit of magic happen. What did you learn last year during your victory that could help you this year? Just knowing how hard to push the truck and when to push it. This race got two really fast guys ahead of me just like last year. And if I could just nail the whole shot and end up second on the road, just push the guy in the lead, I think uh, we'll reevaluate where we are tomorrow night on Saturday and make adjustments for Sunday. Now, I heard you talking about how a big mistake a lot of people make is they go too hard on day one. They don't have a truck left for Sunday. Right. How, how do you make it last while also trying to push the limits? That's the tough part. Racing trophy trucks, you never know what's going to happen. Jason Voss and Harley could have problems right away or they could run guns blazing the whole time and have no problems. But that's what makes off-road such a great sport. It's super unpredictable. The talent is relentless and you just got to put a time up on the board and hope it's good enough. What's the toughest part of this course? 
toughest part of the course is like you said, just keeping the car together, but knowing how hard to go without being stupid and making a mistake. I think keeping the rubber side down and still railing pretty hard, but not risking breaking the truck and still putting a good time on the board is what's critical to being successful here. I've heard the proving grounds are insane. What, what, how would you describe the proving grounds? Proving grounds are just four foot deep holes that either got to hold it wide open the whole time or you got to back off. There's no hesitation in that or you can end up in trouble really quick. Ooh, it's almost like a whoop section for a motocross or supercross racer. Yes, sir. What's your background in motorsports? Do you? My brother and I both started in trophy carts. We were actually in the first ever trophy cart race. So my dad has groomed us to become the drivers we are today. Got into off-road at 15 years old in trophy lights, moved up to 6100, won a bunch of races in a, a championship in 2015. I went away to run track in college. I ran for University of Oregon oh, in cool. USC. What event? 100 and 200 meters, so oh, I was a sprinter. What and was your best time? I ran 1033 and 2052, which wow. landed me 25th in the nation my sophomore year of college. So. Unbelievable. But Brett didn't play any sports in college. He focused on racing, so I was out of it for a little bit. But my dad's given me the opportunity after I graduated to come back, and now we're two brothers racing again, and it's honestly been a dream come true. Pretty competitive between you and your brother? Really competitive, but we need each other. We, we, we're pretty similar drivers, and we push each other. So when my brother puts a good time, there's, there's no animosity towards each other. We keep pushing ourselves, and... What's cool about us is we're the only set of twins that we know of in, in motorsports that have had uh, success in off-road. So that's really cool to be able to do something that I'm extremely passionate about with my brother. And hopefully one day we can put together a couple of big time wins like the Baja 400, Baja 1000, Mint 400, King of the Hammers, you name it. Excellent. A unique relationship you have with your sponsor over here, Coors Light. It's great to see a major sponsor. You said that this is uh, your dad's profession. Tell me a little bit more about that. Right. So we're beer distributors. My grandfather started uh, Crest Beverage in San Diego in 1956. And my dad sort of took over the company when he was old enough. And we sell the Constellation, Coors, Miller Coors, uh, White Claw, Mark Anthony Brands, Boston Beer. So we control a, a big part of the, the brands that you see at restaurants, broad market stores like 7-Eleven, gas stations, Vaughn's, Ralph's, chains, big major chain stores. So it's a big operation and Coors is a big reason why we're able to keep our program running. Well, that's a heck of a thank you to Coors. Do you hope eventually you give Coors enough attention that they want to come on, uh, you know, full full sponsor, primary sponsor? Right, right. Coors has been, you know, a great product for our company and we sort of just want to show our appreciation by running them on our racetrack and if they see value in it and want to do some more content with us, I mean, we're, we're absolutely all for it. Excellent. What type of motor do you have in this truck? We got a Dugans big block Chevy, uh, makes about 1100 horsepower, four wheel drive, and this thing just absolutely screams. What size tires? 40 inch BF Goodrich tires. Wow. All around. 40s all around? All around. Love it, man. Anything you'd like to add? No, just super excited to be back. Uh, it was a little bit of a spur of the moment to decide to come back and defend our win, but the guys aren't going to make it easy. I got Cole Potts behind me. Uh, Jeff Turzo, I know, is about trying to win a championship, so he's going to go hard. I got Harley and Jason next to me, and then Abdali Lopez. He's somebody you can't count out either. Good luck to you. Thank you. I appreciate it. What year is that? That's uh, 2016. Yeah. Uh, Excellent. How, how much of a proud popper are you? That was a good day. That was a really good day. What do you think out here, I mean, how fulfilling is it to have both your boys racing with your team? It's got to be a lot of fun. Yeah, it's like uh, Christian shared with me before. It's, uh, there's been some ups and downs this year, but uh, there's been more ups and downs. We've won a couple races, and uh, we've run strong in a couple other ones. We had one mechanical and uh, a couple crashes. So proud of them. I mean, you're at the top of the game right here. So uh, we could have stayed in lower classes and, and probably had a lot more success, but we decided to move up. They wanted to move up. They wanted the challenge. So it, it isn't easy racing uh, racing trick trucks. I mean, these are the best guys in the world racing off-road cars, except for maybe rally guys. Uh, and I'd like to see them come over and do this. So it's uh, it, I'm proud of them for doing it. It's not easy. How much work is it running your business and keeping this race team together? Well, like anything uh, in business, it's all about the people you bring with you. We try to we try to surround ourselves with really, really good people. So it's not as hard as you would think. Um, it's uh, it, it's it's just you know asking volunteers to come to the races and stuff like that. Sometimes it's hard, uh, but we try to take care of them best we can. But we've got a great team, 
of uh, people that help work on this truck. So it's not as hard as you would think. Perfect. What's your full name again? Uh, Steven Serapis. Excellent, Steve. And how long have you been involved in racing? 40 years. Started wow. in 1980. Good. Are you a driver? Yep. When did you step away from driving? Uh, the last couple years. I think the last race I drove, I got in a race truck, was 2018, the Parker uh, 400 with uh, Cameron Steele and I drove, and we got fifth overall and fifth in class and missed third by, like, I don't know, 40 seconds. So, I, you know, we only got one, we only have really one or two trucks, and the boys, it's their turn now. I had my turn, and uh, uh, will I ever will I get back in again? Who knows? Maybe. Is it just as much fun pushing them? Or is it a different sensation when you're here, not not in your driving suit and helmet, and you're kind of the pit boss over here, right? It's still more fun driving. Don't let anybody kid you. You know what I mean? It's it's always fun to be in the seat, and uh, you know you're sort of like uh, you're sort of like in an armchair at a at a football game. You know what I mean? You can't you're not playing anymore like I used to years ago. So it's it's different. It's different, but that's the role I've chosen, and you know I'm fully content with it. Good luck to you guys. Thank you so much. Brand new truck. These guys ready to rock. Could you please introduce yourself? I'm Brian Chalene, owner of Fusion Off-Road. Excellent. And? Dave Kleiman, uh, uh, driver of the number 80 trophy truck. Okay, Dave. So first race, you just stepped up from 6,100. What's your mindset going into this? Uh, we want to go big. We're going to run hard and uh, try and have a clean day and have a chance for a good finish. Um, first first time out and excited to see what the truck will do. Where'd you qualify? We qualified uh, 16th, I think, out of 24 trucks. What type of motor you got in your truck? We've got a Danzio P600 big block that hauls the mail. It's a beast. So it sounds like. How old are you? I am 47 years old. Thank you. From? Uh, Carlsbad, California. What do you like to do outside of racing? Uh, surfing for sure. Very good. And you said this is your vacation, right? This is my vacation. We're in flip flops and board shorts. How about it? You got your whole crew over here. Crew loving up. it. They're having a good time. We talked to the truck builder. What was it like putting this thing together? Um, painstaking, uh, every detail we've, we've dotted the I's, crossed the T's, and, uh, I'm just excited that tomorrow Dave actually gets to put the wood to this thing and, uh, we can see what it gets to do. In the unlimited class, you get a lot of creativity. Any, any little unique truck tr tricks in here that make this truck unique to you? You know, there is, can but, I, talk but I can't tell you about them, so. <laughs> no, actually it's, it's, uh, this thing's powered by the Danzio Big Block. We've got King Shocks on it, BFG tires, and uh, I think that's the combo that it's going to take to. What size tires? 40-inch uh, BFGs. Is that pretty much the size that all the, the trick trucks are running 40s out here? Yeah, pretty much all the guys in trick truck are running 40s now. So. Excellent. And that, that Danzio engine. Tell me a little bit more about that. Oh, she's a beast. It's a uh, big block. They're one of the first guys that started putting big blocks in the trophy truck, and it's uh, it's proven to be. It, it's awesome. How many cubic inches did you say? Uh, it's about 600 cubic inches. Good lord, that's a whole lot of motor. Yep. Excellent, guys. Well, anything either one of you would like to add heading into tomorrow? Well, I just, 20 years into a friendship with Dave here, he's uh, got our first trophy truck, and uh, it's, it's a pretty cool feeling for us at Fusion Off-Road, and uh, having Dave uh, pilot this thing, it's pretty awesome. How'd you guys meet? Uh, we met through my wife and some friends about 20 years ago, and this guy was into dune buggies and I built him and uh, we've been friends ever since. Perfect. What do you anticipate being the toughest part of this course? Oh, myself. I mean, the truck is ready and capable. I just got to leave it wooded. You got some crazy guys out here like old Harley and Jason Boss and they're not scared. So what do you do when they're creeping up on your tail? Well, if, I'm, if they're creeping up on my tail, I'm doing, I'll have no problem at all. <laughs> ah, that means you got by them to begin with, right? What do you do to get by them when you're trying to get through? The hammer down. Love it. Good luck to you guys. Thanks so much. Thank you guys. Appreciate it. Let's take a look at this truck one more time. It is gorgeous. Keep doing it. Doing it, doing it, doing it well. Dave, you just come over to supervise. No, I'm doing that already. He's the superintendent the supervisor here. Yeah, it is. Here with the man, Harley Lettner. Harley, how are you feeling heading into this race? Uh, feeling good. Got uh, everyone at Concrete Motorsports, got the truck all dialed in, ready to go. Uh, I love Laughlin. I love the short, aggressive racing. Uh, I've had a lot of success here. So uh, qualified second yesterday, third overall. So we'll start behind uh, Jason Voss, side by side with Serapis. 
So I'm hoping to get uh, the whole shot on him and go out there and chase Jason down and try to have a good day today so Kevin can uh, finish her off on Sunday. Take me through this season and how it's been for you. Uh, season hasn't been that good for us this year. Uh, we had a DNF at Parker. Uh, we got fourth at the Mint. And uh, Vegas Arena had a DNF as well. So just... What's caused so much hard luck for you? Uh, product failure, actually, to be honest. Just lost the rear end once and just... What happened in Vegas Arena? I said lost the rear end. Lost the rear end, Yeah, okay. so this hasn't been good. We were uh, second in points last year, so we really wanted to chase a championship this year. So it didn't work out, so we're just... Testing stuff, making it better so we can come out swinging and get that number one plate next season. How important would it be to win this race? Uh, very important. Just to have the momentum of the last race this season, going into next season with a win is just, I mean, there's nothing better than winning. And the feeling for the team and the boss and everything is just, it's great to leave the season with a win. What type of motor do you got in this vehicle? Uh, we have a custom built Joe Gibbs racing engine. Really? Yes. Tell me about that. NASCAR uh, technology in this thing. Yes, NASCAR technology developed by Joe Gibbs and Terrible Herps. Really? So we have a Herp Smith Fab truck. So we have one of their motors, and it's just uh, we, uh, Brian Arciero has one. Just won the Baja 400. So they've. This is the first season on them. The Herps trucks have them, and we have them in Arciero. It's just. Uh, it's a very well built package. Is Joe Gibbs aware of this yes, program? Yes, they're built out of Joe Gibbs. Wow. Racing. Have you ever had an opportunity to talk to Joe Gibbs? Uh, not yet. We're okay. going to plan a deal to go back there and check out the facility and just see what the NASCAR shops are all about. We hear they're amazing. That would be pretty cool. Yeah, How so, old are you, Harley? I'm um, 35. 35. How long have you been involved in motorsports? Uh, too long. Too I started, long. My first race was 15. On, and what kind of vehicle? Uh, in a class 12 car, which is the Volkswagen motor, the beam style front end. Okay. But uh, I'm fourth generation. So Fourth I was, generation. I was raised in it. Tell me about that. Uh, uh, so, uh, my great what was your great grandpa driving? Great grandpa set a land speed record in a 32 Roadster. What? Way back in the day. What year was that? Uh, I don't know. I really don't know. Yeah. It was a long time ago. Okay. <laughs> um, and then my grandpa raced NASCAR. He did. And then, yeah. Okay. Back in the way back in the day, the jalopies and stuff. He raced on Daytona when it was like half on the beach. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So uh, and then he got into off road racing and did that for many many years. And uh, my dad, and then just, you know, family. Been going to the race since I was a little kid. <clears throat> and I always dreamed of being like my grandpa and my dad. So we had a team for a long time and then had to shut that down due to my grandpa passing and stuff. And started racing with Kevin in Concrete Motorsports and Trophy Truck. So pretty excited. Very cool. Tell me about Concrete Motorsports. What is it? Um, Concrete Motorsports is based out of Texas. Okay. They uh, do the underground piping. How'd you get hooked up with those guys? Um, through... Uh, my friend Bo and Mike Smith over at the Herps. Kevin's a very tall gentleman like myself, a little bigger than me though. And uh, he was having uh, a hip surgery before Silver State and uh, we weren't racing. And uh, he asked me to fill in, like, the Herps linked me up with him. And then I uh, asked them, they asked me to come back to Vegas Arena. And now I started working there and full time split the races with Kevin. What's your, what's your, what is your passion outside of racing? Any hobbies you like to pursue or anything? Uh, yeah, I do a lot of everything. Dirt biking, mountain biking, just a lot of that stuff. Okay. You know, jet skiing, going on the river, going on the desert and having fun. That sounds just cool. Anything, I like to have fun. Anything that gets my heart beating fast. Greatest accomplishment <laughs> out here in the Best in the Desert series? Uh, best in the Desert, um, hmm. It's a lot of, I think, uh, I won this race overall on a class one car in okay. 17. That was pretty, that was pretty cool. Have you ever won in the unlimited category? Uh, in the yeah, trophy that, truck? in the trophy truck. Yeah. We finished off the season last year at Tonopah with a win. Okay. And then came to Laughlin for at a snow race and backed it up with an overall win. Kevin won that one too. How many best in the desert wins? In trophy truck? Trophy truck. Uh, I only have one. Okay. So this would be a big deal here. Yep, right? This is all, this is, <clears throat> uh, I haven't even raced this be the end of the full season in a trophy truck for me so i'm still new in the trophy truck good luck to you. anything like that thank you very much no just uh all good excellent man good luck thank you take a look at this machine yeah. <laughs> but I got very the okay. expensive you got the okay body. one guy race in the four-wheel drive so we're definitely uh, we're we got something to prove here you're saying there may not be a body left on this thing if you're doing your job huh Unfortunately, it will be flapping around and maybe some fenders missing, yes. <laughs> it's just a brutal go for it course, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's not that you're out there trying to take people out. It's just, we start side by side and we do a couple quick turns right in the infield and you rub. Rubbing's racing, so it's all in good, clean fun with everyone else. It's not, you're not going out T-bone anyone, but you're going to bump fenders with 
I think there's 30, 40 trucks on a 17 mile loop. You're bound to get inside of someone. Good luck. Thank you. Battle in turn one. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> You're excited? Yeah, man, you gotta keep an eye on this guy. Big race. He's gonna huh? send it, yeah. Stay to you. Thank you. How you feeling? Good. Good. Did you go get it? Oh yeah. Time to have, have some fun. What about these conditions? A little windier than we thought, right? I wish it tied down a little, let the dust settle, but it'll be fun. Keep everything clean. So hopefully, if we ever get flat traffic, it'll help us out in our favor. So it should be a good day. Good luck, man. Thank you. What are we doing here? Putting on some GoPros. Joey getting ready to co-drive. What's your last name, Joey? Rodriguez. Excellent, Joey. How are you feeling here right before the race as a co-driver? I'm pretty confident. I'm just hoping I can steer him in the right direction, man. There's a question I have for you. Yep. In these marathon races, we rely on the co-driver to change tires and mm -hmm. things like that. Here they're saying one mistake and you're pretty much done in this race. How does the co-driver's job change on a shorter race here? Uh, more intent, definitely, because you know it's only a really, really short course, and whenever we have a problem like that, it's a lot faster pace as if it were you know a longer race so we have to get out there and make sure we get back on the road as quickly as we can now in terms of what you're doing as far as watching hazards and watching for everybody else since you guys are already going to know the course does your job change at all um i mean he knows this course very well and this is one of like his favorite courses and you know i i trust that he'll do a good job and not i mean flats isn't really like a concern at the, in this race but um I think he'll do good. What's your yeah. biggest concern as a co-driver? Me? Um, just making sure that the car is running good. You know, I mean, uh, we had some heating problems in our other mid-engine uh, last race, but I, I'm pretty confident in this car. We did a really good well on prepping it, and not too many concerns in this race, honestly. I think it'll be really smooth. So you're going to be monitoring all the gauges, the temperature yep. of the car, everything like that? Yep, just let him wheel the car and just make sure it's running good. Yep. Good luck to you guys. <laughs> Leak spotted on Dean's vehicle. You guys have any idea what's causing that? Uh, no, you know, everything leaks a little bit, but all we gotta do is get to the finish. Whether there's grease or oil, it don't matter. We'll is get there. It, is that a concern that it's leaking before the race? No, I think we'll be alright. That's Probably just a little, just a little too much. That's what I'm saying. It's better a little bit over than under. Yeah. Isn't there a famous quote, a little extra grease never hurt anybody? That's, yep, right, just that's about. right. We'll have a little more cleaning to do. There we go. Good luck to you guys. As you can tell, well maintained, well lubricated. <laughs> Raja uh, bit Spencer yesterday from General Tire. Power plant in this machine is a... It's an LS3. Adam Wick builds it out of Vegas. Um, and actually, it's very reliable. It's been doing great. So, I mean, hey, we got pulled with it. So, is this the same motor we see in the 6100 trucks? Uh, I think it's a little more than that. Uh, I'm not 100% I'm not sure on all the specs, but... We got a good one for him today, so. What's the most popular motor choice in the buggy category? You know? I gotta say it's an LS of some sort. Um, gotcha. Some of the guys are working up into bigger motors, but definitely an LS is, is the way to go. It's just reliable. You guys can do anything to it. It's not like it's a spec class. So can... Yep, absolutely. So who knows what Adam Wick did to this thing, right? Yeah, absolutely, yep. It's uh, completely unlimited. So as long as there's no fenders, it's a class one. So that's how we run it. You can do big boat motors, you can do turbos, you can do whatever you want. So we chose a real reliable route and uh, I guess it's doing good for us today so far. So say good luck. Right. One you. question I have for you too. I know do you know a lot about this vehicle? Uh, a little bit, yeah. Okay, so uh, James was telling me about how light the chassis is. CJ was questioning, is this chassis durable enough to make it through? Well I will say with James driving the thing is, uh, it's held on, so it's it's a light chassis, but that's kind of a problem. You know, we're trying to go lightweight, and we changed the right thing, it's held up, so we strengthened some spots and took whatever we needed out, so it's, it's good. Excellent. I think we'll make it through. Wish you the best. Appreciate it. How about a 65 gallon fuel tank? James.
James tells me he will have enough fuel. He will not have to make a pit stop this race. He says, if you pit, day's over. Can't make a mistake, can't pit. This is Monster Seal Tire Sealant. This is the number one tire sealant in off-road racing for the last uh, seven years. It's used by Voss, Lofton, Menzies, Rob Mack, Concrete Motorsports, and the number one qualifier in today's race, James Dean in the Class 1 car. Love it. So you fill your tire with that. Yeah. That it helps. Are these, these are tubeless tires, right? So yeah, these are all tubeless tires. So what this product does, it's an awesome product, is when you get a little tiny puncture that can cause a big deflation and a big flat at high speed, what this does, it stays more uh, as a liquid. When it hits air, it goes straight to it, hardens up, and keeps your tire with pressure in it. So it's an awesome product. We don't run any tires anymore without this. That could be your best friend today. It's your best, yep. Oh, it's awesome stuff. Baja 1000, Rob Mack won three Baja 1000s in a row with this stuff in his tires. Um, Jason Voss has won four of the uh, four out of five biggest arena races with it. And at the end of the race, we check the tires and we look in the fender wells and we see the sealant, the monster seal sprayed up inside the fender well, which means you would have had a flat. The last Vegas Torino race, there was sealant sprayed up in three of the four fender walls, which, which means he would have had at least three flats during that race, probably more. Thanks stuff's the, awesome. Thank you for the info. Great awesome. Stuff. Have a great day. Last one, too. Sure is. type of motor you're running in this? It's a uh, spread bar LS7. LS7. Wow. How many cubic inches? It's uh, roughly 434 cubic inches. Good luck to you guys. Yeah. <laughs> I, heard, I heard that as a rough estimate on cubic inches, huh? Yeah. Top secret stuff down here? So I've been told, yes. Why the LS7? They work good when they do run. <laughs> They were good, but when they don't run, they don't work good. Got you. Tends to happen more than, than when it runs good. I can understand that. Well, let's hope today they run good. Right? Absolutely. Good luck. Wow, you want to talk about a Sandberry super fan. That is that vehicle right there. When did you get that tattoo? A year ago. How well do you know Sam? <laughs> you must love his car. What made you decide to get his car of all cars on your... I don't know. It was just my favorite car. <laughs> He's my favorite driver. That is so cool. How long have you been following him? Uh, I don't know. How long have we been racing or volunteering? 12 years. 12 years. Where are you out of? Uh, well, I live in Vegas now, but we started... We live actually like an hour that way. <laughs> Excellent. What's your name? Julia. That is cool. That is that is true race passion. Is time? Wow. What's Sam think of that? Oh, well, yeah, he really liked it. He let me pre-run with him, so... Man, that's great. How about it? We got some super fans over here. Are you? Do you have that level of fanaticism? I do. No, no. no tattoos. I, I love the guys, but not that much. That's uh, that's quite a compliment. Cool tattoo. Thanks for showing us. Is Sam going to win today? That's the question. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Unusual conditions today. It is unusually windy and also cool. 65 degrees at race start time. It's been in the 90s before, and we normally don't see this level of wind. And I gotta ask you guys, what's it like working with Best in the Desert? It's gotta be a ton of work to pull these races off. It's a lot of work and a lot of stress, but it's a lot of fun. It's a good group of competitors. Huh? Competitors, our staff, our volunteers, everyone involved. We all work together as a team to get everything done. There you go. How about you? you have fun? Oh yeah, always. Sam, you got a fan that loves you so much, you got a tattoo of you. How, how's that make you feel? It's awesome. It is awesome. It is. Sam, question for you. What type of motor are you running this vehicle? A uh, LS7. LS7. Why the LS7? Uh, Redline sponsors that motor and they built it and it, it works good. It works good. Good, good luck today. Thank you. Truck. And my father is doing uh, racing a 6100 truck, so we got a fleet of vehicles out here. I love it, Adam. Um, is this going to wear you out running two categories? No, it's so short. It's only 70 miles a day that uh, it's not that bad. And then I get, a, I get a break in between. So I get about an hour and a half break and just enough to cool off, take a drink, have something to eat, and get ready to go for a trophy truck. Good luck, Adam. Thank you. Good luck, man. Thank you. Good luck. Gio's got a glove from Hutchins. Raja ate the thumb off the glove.
Oh, thanks, though, buddy. Appreciate it. You get the spin, and you get the spin. You know oh, you're in lock oh, when you get the spin. Oh, spin. You get the spin. Oh, All right, where's that? I'll wait. You can do my spin. Same terrible Herbst family that runs an off-road race. They own, you said casinos and gas They have a casino out in uh, Las Vegas. I think uh, we're up in Nevada. But uh, they have a bunch of gas stations out in Arizona, Nevada. Maybe in California. But yeah. Cool. So, they stay busy, you know. And they got a big, uh, uh, what do you call it, shop in Huntington Beach. The Delver Herbst Smith race trucks. They actually build there. So it's pretty... Sorry, what happened out there? Uh, had a great run going, and then third lap, we lost our dry sump belt, and it popped off. Which belt? Our dry sump belt, okay. our oil belt popped off, and weirdest thing, is perfect, just threw it right back on. Um, so we had that happen, we lost a lot of time on that, and then we were coming back, we got around Barry and Loft on the last lap, and I swapped up, and we ended up going for a tumble, lost time there, but car was- Are you guys okay? Yeah, a little banged up, a little sore, but we're here. actually been a thing like five shoot three years ago i had these in um i call them my good luck shoes so i've been wearing them around for a while and i haven't had the colors so basically now i got a little, little match up in there i like it how you feeling everything everything good on the truck yeah everything's good um starting first we'll see how long i have clean air for which i'm sure we're gonna catch some other some of these other classes the slower classes so um we're some chug around, be smart. We gotta look at the bigger picture here and try to win this championship. It's a big thing is being smooth out there, right? How do you be smooth on a course like this? Um, I don't know, that's my secret. Ooh. Can't give it out. Right. <laughs> Good luck. Thank you. Mr. Jergensen, good luck to you. Thank you. I've gotta tell you, you were flawless in Vegas Dorino. Couldn't have done much better. How's it changed when you come here? How's the strategy changed? Uh, yeah, it was a really, really good run, like surprisingly well, uh, no problems, and that's how you win. Um, here, it's a total different game. It's all as fast as you can go, and I think Brock is at home at this course. He's won here more than anybody, and he's fast. As we can tell, he got the pole position. He caught us by three seconds. It's gonna be a tight race, and I don't know which way it's gonna go. I don't think these trucks are gonna break. They're very reliable, especially this Camberg truck. I, it's going to be a battle. I have no idea what to expect. Best of luck to you and your co-driver. RJ qualified, so he will drive. That's how it goes. Whoever qualifies has to drive the first day, right? Is that how it goes to you? Uh, I should probably double check with him, but I think, yeah, I think that's accurate. Whoever qualifies has to start the race. Are you allowed to co-drive? I can't. But so you decided you're just going to stay fresh and let this guy do it? Yep. We got a normal navigator um, that's full-time throughout the year. He's better at the GPS, all that stuff, um, calling corners in the dust and just uh, trying to just keep their normal flow because normally they're not a two-day run, and so I have to be ready to get in halfway during the race. And so to be fresh, I don't ever ride with RJ, so we didn't want to change it. Uh, anything different. So, What's just, your co-driver's name? Uh, Max Miller. Max Miller, excellent. Are you limited on the amount of drivers you can have? Um, you can have two drivers. That's it, so Max can't drive. Uh, he could, I guess, in a in a jam, I guess you could switch because you have to have an armband. Okay. Um, so so you've you never driven the truck. <laughs> so that would be in a real, that would be like center fielder coming into pitch, right? Yeah, the final scenario, don't want to go to it, but if we have to. How's your job as a co-driver changed at this race? You know, it's it's such a close race and a tight race. Nobody ever gets really uh, spread out, so we've got to really make sure that we're right on the.
corners and paying attention to GPS and make sure we're not blowing anything and all that dust. Is it a big difference for you watching the, uh, the difference between RJ and Adam? Do they have a lot of differences or are they pretty similar? You know what? There's a few differences, but they're, they're pretty similar. They're actually both really smooth drivers, you know, really fast drivers. Um, you know, both just pretty dialed and focused, really. Good luck to you guys. Thank you. Hager, right at home. One last week out at Glen Helen on the short course. for is the jump over needles highway this is wild guys check it out Vegas, an hour from Lake Havasu. Nevada is over there. Arizona. Where's is California? No, I'm lost. This is Nevada, right? This is Nevada. Nevada, California. Right We're close though. Aren't we close to the Arizona border? Yeah, try to cross the river. Right across the river. How about that? Come on, Terry. How far to the California border? Oh, this, this, is, this is like right yeah. at the fringe of all three. Do they have a name for that? Tri-State. Tri-State. Tri-State area. Tri-State area. Tri -state area. Tri -state area. Tri -state area. Tri -state. I'm sorry, so you said what casino 10 miles down the road? We're Arizona, Nevada, and California. And what's the name of the casino? Avi Casino. Excellent. 10 miles down the road. You guys are from here? Yes. Anything else special about this area I should work into the broadcast? The river. The river is awesome. Come here during the summer. It's the best you can get right now. Beautiful weather, beautiful sunsets. Oh, oh yeah. It's rare to have this kind of wind too, right? Uh, every year when the best day desert comes around, <laughs> it's, time of the year. it's just that time of the year. What do the locals think of this race? They love it. They love it? Yeah. yeah. I have one guy at the hotel who said his car was getting all dirty. He was mad. Uh, <laughs> There's only a couple of those, right? <laughs> There's only a few of those. Everybody else? You go down to the pits down there, it's it's probably packed right now. And awesome. it's nights off of leaf, so it's gonna be packed. There you go. Did you say the Laughlin Leap? The Laughlin Leap. What's See, that? 
it's just a big jump to see who can jump the farthest. And when's that place? Tonight at seven, I believe. Tonight is seven. Yeah. Wow. Cool. Thanks. Congratulations, wire to wire, but you're telling me it was not flawless, huh? No, it wasn't. Um, you know, we got off to a good run the first lap. Everything was good, and you know, I was happy with the truck. We were, uh, you know, we were keeping it slow pace, not nothing crazy. And I think we ended up making up some time on on second. Everyone else, you know, the rest of the field, and then uh, going on lap two, it got stuck in second gear, which is uh, I once I did that, I was so mad. I was like, then you know, those sections I could do 110, 115 on. I was only able to do 70, so um, couldn't. I didn't have first either. It was just second, so we tried to. We just tried to manage second, and um, you know, when we brought it here. I don't know how we ended up, but um, you know, overall, given the factors, uh, pretty happy with today. That's amazing. You were able to lead this thing without third gear. Were you bumping off the limiter or anything? Were you up on the red line? Um, I was at the beginning, and then um, you know, I realized I was like, you know what, we got to you know, we're trying to points race here, so I. I brought it down a little bit right before the limiter. I didn't want to just run it the whole race. Um, you know, on the limiter, I still had three more laps to go. So um, we just kept it smooth and we didn't really go that fast because we couldn't. So uh, we'll see how we end up and on the next day we go. Congratulations. Thank you.
Jurgensen, how'd it go for you out there? Good, everything went real smooth, no problems, no flats. Uh, temperature stayed down. This camera truck was fast, um, so was Brock. Uh, and it was a good battle all day. I, I mean, it was short, you know, only 60 miles, but it was fun. And it was balls to the walls the whole time. We never missed a beat, never missed a corner. Um, ready for day two. Uh, it feels good, the truck feels solid. It's gonna be, I don't know what's gonna happen again, you know. I got him by like 20 seconds, so. If he beats me off the start tomorrow, I can't let him put 20 seconds on me. That's that's the game plan. Something like that. Anything surprise you out there? We hear that some of those ruts are getting pretty deep. Uh, they aren't as bad as people say, in my opinion. Or this truck works really well, one or the other. Uh, nothing got us out of whack. Nothing was that rough. Uh, Sean was doing a good job calling corners. You know, we kind of went into the first lap blind and kind of showed the first lap he pulled on us. I think he's having a mechanical problem, but we'll take anything we can get from him, you know, we'll carry that on the day two. Congratulations. Thanks. Things go for you out there. Uh, went pretty good. We qualified P3. Um, got out there, lined up next to Jurgensen, um, and we all knew he's fast. So I got out there, I hit a rock, thought it was either a wheel or a drive shaft. We just then decided to drive through it. Um, got back around uh, RJ and then Mills finished up right behind us. So it's going to be close for tomorrow. We're, we're looking pretty good. Um, still tight with Heger for the championship. He's three points ahead of us. So it all comes down to tomorrow. How would you describe that street jump out there? We watched it get some serious air. Oh, no, that was an absolute blast. You know, it's it's fun to hit these things wide open and see how far you can carry it. And this truck works so good. This Mason, this Mason truck works phenomenal. Thanks so much. Anything you want to add? Uh, no, I just want to say hi to my family. Thank you for all your support and everything. My crew, my sponsors, everybody that sticks with us. Thanks a lot. Awesome. Thanks so much. And then Travis, just some extra info for me. How old are you? Uh, 40. How long have you been doing this? Uh, since 05. So about 15 years-ish. Perfect. And where are you out of? Uh, Los Angeles. Hobbies outside of racing? Uh, like mountain biking. Um, like mountain biking a lot. We do a bunch of water sports, boating, that type of stuff. So we're an outside activity family. Excellent, man. Thanks so much. Good luck Thanks, tomorrow. guys. Appreciate it. In Texas, how things go for you out there? There we go. Oh, because the cord came out. There we go. There would be a reason. All right, now we're ready for Team Texas. How things go for you out there? Everything went great out there. Uh, we got off to a good start. We came out uh, side by side, so we got in the uh, guy in front of us, Dust. But ran a consistent race, uh, dialed the truck in each lap a little faster, a little faster, and uh, I think we finished second and third on time. And uh, we're going for the fourth, uh, we're in fourth in points for the championship. So I hope we can make up some ground and uh, at least podium for the year, if not win. How were you able to go faster every lap? Was it just getting comfortable and learning the track? It seems like the whoop sections in the back were real close together. So it was piling up, stacking up the rear in second. So we were coming out of the corners in third, and it got us out of the corners up to speed faster. Oh, excellent. Anything you'd like to add about today? Hey, I'd just like to thank my navigator, our team. Everyone's done a great job. Go watch the trophy truck win. There you go. Thanks. Congratulations. Appreciate it. There's the man. Good day to you. Thank you. Hey, I saw you in Vegas, Torino. You're starting last. Now you're starting first. How good does that feel? Feels good. Feels good to be starting first today. It's a little dusty. They didn't get a lot of water on the track, so uh, I think we're in a good spot. Excellent. What kind of motor do you have in this vehicle? Uh, Kevin Croyer builds our motors, uh, so we're running a, a big block Chevy. <laughs> I love it. What's the, what's the key to winning here? Uh, this is a sprint race, you know, so uh, there's no holding back. I think uh, start on lap one, you just got to go out there and lay down what you got. And uh, the flat tires, you know, uh, you can't have any downtime. It's too short of a race. Excellent. How many times champion are you again, Jason? Um, four best and dozen championships, I believe. Wow. So we're here uh, here this weekend. We got a shot at another one. Um, that's what we're here today. What are your hobbies outside of race? Working. <laughs> working. Working. No, a, lot, a lot of working. like to go uh, rock crawling, go camping, but uh, a lot of working. How many years have you been involved in races? So, uh, since 2005. Wow. So, How old are you? Uh, 32. 32. Yep. So, getting, the, getting old, man. And I was at Short Course last week, and you were credited for starting the mustache fad. Is that true? <laughs> RJ uh, Anderson says that. I don't know. RJ Anderson says he's hitting like 85% on the podium since he grew one. <laughs> it's good luck. It is. So, we'll see. Good luck, guys. Thank you.
scenario again, the coming in third in points. If you win, you need Terzo fourth or worst. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So if Terzo takes third, he clinches. Yep. Got you. There you go. And then Oleus. If we win, I don't think he's got a shot at it. Okay. But could be wrong. Yeah. He can, yeah, he can get all the way. So yeah, he can get second if we win. Yeah. fiber machine. Good luck to you. Oh, yeah, you still want to tear you. the body off? That's what it takes, absolutely. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> thank you. Here we are getting ready to go with the point leader. How you feeling in there, sir? Feeling good, you know, we got a, a good little pre-run run into the side-by-sides the other night, so the same course as last year. We had a great time last year, first time we drove this uh, Tisco truck, so we're looking to have some more fun out there and get a good start spot for tomorrow. You come into this race as a point leader. Talk to me about how the season's gone for you and why it's been so successful. Um, I mean, honestly, our, our season hasn't been super successful, but we've been right there at the finish every time and uh, have, have done well. We had Lofton drive at Silver State. I was out at, at, at a wedding. I couldn't make it, but he uh, got first and put us in a yeah, good spot to be in contention for the championship at the end of the year. Perfect. How old are you, Jeff? I'm 30. 30? Where are you out of? I'm out of Laguna Niguel, California. How long have you been racing? Uh, this is our sixth season. How many championships? Uh, this will be my first, hopefully. This will be the first. So how exciting is that with a chance for your first ever championship? We're stoked. Perfect. You know, we, we put a lot of time and effort into this, so we're hoping to finally have some results to show it. What's your background in motorsports? Um, not a ton. Started out at the Mint 400 about six years ago and uh, just grew up going out to the desert and stuff, but first time in a spec truck was out in uh, the Mint about six years ago. What's your occupation? I'm a firefighter. Really? Yeah. Wow, that's pretty cool. Yeah, so actually me, my brother, and my brother-in-law, we're all firefighters. All firefighters. Yeah, so this is part of my family business, and we get to, to hang out and do a little bonding and compete against each other, so that's we have a good time. That's cool. Well, yeah. thank you for your service. Is it, is it tough to get the time off work <laughs> if it requires to go racing? Yeah, it is. Uh, between work and family, it's, it's hard to get out here, but uh, we've managed to make it happen pretty much every time. So. And where are you a firefighter at? Uh, my brother and I work for the city of Newport Beach, the Newport and then uh, my brother-in-law Andrew works for the city of Burbank. Perfect, guys. We wish you the best. How about co-driver? How you feeling over there? Great, ready, ready to go. Ready to keep this points lead. That's right. How's the job as a co-driver change on a short track like this? Um, it actually makes it a little easier, you know. We are on a loop course. We know the, you know, we, we know the track, so it's uh, very simple. You know, he, he remembers the course after the first couple laps, and I just kind of keep doing things. So very easy. Just enjoy the ride. And finally, what type of motor in this truck? Uh, this is a Dugan's 8-stack. Uh, it's a Chevy motor, but a small block. Poured out to 474 cubic inch, so. How many cubic inch? 474. Ooh, that's a lot of cubic inch. Yeah. You guys have a safe ride, and good luck to you. Thank you, brother. Thank you so it. much. Robert, yeah, man, for sure. Team Chad Noodle Whiskey ready to go? Yes, sir. I, talk, I got to talk to you real quick when you had your helmet on Vegas Torino. Yep. Now we're here. I mean, how do things change when you're on a short course like this? Yeah, it's just more more pedal, more right pedal to stay in it and uh, hope everything stays under you. Any changes to your truck? So this truck just got back from uh, Geysers. This truck has been, the last time I've been in this truck was this race last year, so I've been a year out of this truck. Oh, so this is not what you ran Vegas Torino? I ran the Tisco, Tisco truck. The Tisco yep. truck. What's different about this truck? Uh, it's just, I mean, it's, it's all you know, a little older truck, but we rewired it and repaneled it. And it's uh, got a little bit more juice in the motor. Um, steering wise, a little slower than the Tisco. Got to chase it a little bit more, but it's a, it's a nice old truck and it's fun to drive. So it is a little bit of a shakeout run for us here this this year, so we can get ready for BITD season next year. Excellent, love it. How old are you again, Robert? Uh, that's a good question. I think I'm 45. From Chattanooga, Tennessee. Excellent. And is is it tough to get training and practice in coming from Tennessee? Just had that conversation a minute ago. It's the first time I see this truck. The shakedown's always race day. So, so there, there's is. no desert in Tennessee. We huh? don't have a lot of desert. It's like a lot more mountains and trees. So it's a, it's a little different atmosphere. I come from a dirt track background. I'm used to going left. It's a little bit different. What, but you what know, did you run in dirt? Late models. Oh, you ran late models. Where at? Uh, mainly through Kentucky, Tennessee, and Georgia. Okay. You ever win any races or championships? Nah, you know, I, I didn't win anything big, but, you know, my local hometown race, I, I pulled some top fives and stuff at. But exactly. enjoyed it enough and 
kind of you know got the Beals invited me to come desert racing about six years ago, and here I sit today. Does, do those skills transfer over? Going left does. Going left does. Going left does. Um, how would you compare the two? Yeah, I mean it's yeah, you, know, you can't. You know, desert racing is just so you the bang for your buck is just the best thing out there. Really, you know, a lot it's of just fun. a lot of fun and. So many races, so many miles, you get to get under it. And it's just the terrain, the people. I mean, everybody here is so great. It's just a great crowd of people. Everybody's in it to have fun and enjoy themselves. And I, I just enjoy coming out here and spending a little time, and especially during the winter back home when you can get out here and get a little uh, little Vegas heat and maybe a little Vegas fun. I love it. What type of motor we got under the hood here? We got a Dugan 8-stack. A Dugan 8-stack. Yes, sir. Good luck to you guys. Keep it Thank safe. Thank you. Mm -hmm. helicopters. Here we go.
Mr. Jason Voss, a commanding lead, and then we heard problems, a flat tire. You still end up finishing up front. Take me through it. Yeah, you know, the truck uh, truck felt great all day. Uh, taking off from the start wheel, put some time on the guys pretty quick. Um, going on the last lap, I think we had like a three and a half minute uh, lead is what our, our team told us on correct time. And, uh, you know, I don't know where it came from, but heading for the road crossing at like 110, we had a, a rough rear tire go out. Uh, probably got a rock a little bit before it. Uh, so, you know, Donnie had to get out and change a good quick tire. And, uh, you know, from there we just kind of charged back up uh, into some lap traffic and, and hope we put enough time on them. How were you able to change the tire so quickly? Well, you're going to talk to him. I didn't get out. <laughs> no, Donnie, Donnie bailed out, uh, did a great job, got out, got our jack. We, we practiced back at the shop, uh, you know, so when it comes race time, uh, we can get it done. Excellent. What's your impression of the course now that you've been out there? Uh, it's good, fun. Uh, you know, a little drier than years past, but uh, being that we are out front with clean air, I, I like that. Anything else you want to talk about? Thanks so much. Yeah. Thanks so much, man. Good luck. Thank you. Good job, guys. Blow any second. Oh my goodness. Uh, feel bad, I was holding Jeff up here. No flat tires though, that's <laughs> a good thing. Well, I wasn't driving fast enough to get a flat. I mean, we were mitigating the entire race. Okay, let's save it. Audio check? Ready? One, two, three, one, two, three. All right, here we go, sir. I hear you had some early problems. Take me through it. Yeah, literally in the first two feet of the race, revved it up took the green light and then all of a sudden rin, 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 no first gear so started missing some shifts in second gear too right away so i had to let harley go but it's a huge bummer uh the whole crew at Serapis motorsports puts a ton of work into this jason duncan right next to me was making great calls all day but unfortunately we had to drive like 60 percent because the transmission was running at 380 degrees which is boiling insanely hot so i was waiting i was waiting for the thing to blow up at mile two and pretty much drove the whole race like that, like on the edge of my seat thinking, gosh, how has this thing not broken yet? So good thing is we made it to the finish line. I honestly can't believe it. Uh, Ray, du Ray Fields from uh, Dugan's Racing Engines, uh, also Rancho Drivetrain, built a hell of a transmission. Uh, Trying to figure out and diagnose uh, why first gear uh, went away so early, why it was getting so hot. Uh, thankfully, we got a brand new transmission sitting in the semi, so we're going to throw that in tomorrow and give them hell. How many hours of work you think you got when you go back to get this ready for tomorrow? Uh, it's to be determined. I know it's going to take at least an hour, an hour and a half to change the transmission, but it's a lot of fun. This was the roughest course I've ever driven on. I've raced the Mint 400, the Ball 1000. Today was a whole different level, and there's going to be some carnage tomorrow, broken hearts, and shoot, if we could damn near do an entire full prep on it. <laughs> You can bet we're going to throw all the wrenches at this thing tomorrow. Now, that's a powerful statement from you, so explain to me why this was the roughest course out there. Well, just every, just there's been racing all day from all different classes, and you got the spec uh, 6100s going before us, which are pretty much mini trophy trucks, and they're hauling butt the entire time on the wood, and pretty much from lap one, just the holes were getting super deep. And then when you add 900, 1100 trophy truck horsepower, digging into those holes, going over 100 miles per hour, 80 miles per hour, just, it's relentless. And the holes are so square that they are so deep that it's sort of like when you're riding a surfboard and you come up to a wave and you, all of a sudden you get to the other side and you're like, oh crap, here comes a bigger wave. And it's like that with the bump and you're like, ah, and it hurts really, really bad when you slam into one. But, Luckily, I got the shot guy riding with me, Jason from SDG. So probably, probably a little bit of suspension adjustments for tomorrow. And I'm just so happy to be at the finish line because I really didn't think it was going to be a possibility in the first 10 seconds of the race. Last question for you. Knowing that it's going to be that rough or rougher tomorrow, how do you dress your driving style? At this point, I already know I'm down. So I got really nothing else to lose. So we'll talk over it with my crew tonight. I've got two options, either just a flat out send it try to break the truck because obviously it doesn't break very easy or I just let the two guys or however many guys in front of me just dice out and hope they break. I haven't decided yet. <laughs> Congratulations. That was the best movie ever. <laughs> <laughs>
right, here we go. Jeff Terzo, championship contender. You knew you just had to be safe out there, have a nice, consistent run. What are your thoughts on your performance? Yeah, we uh, had a pretty solid day. No major issues, just like a little butt, uh, drive shaft vibration. But Igor did a great job over here. Um, we're not too worried about the championship right now. We know we got a whole other day of racing, so we just wanted to have a good finish and get us in a spot to uh, go out and compete tomorrow. We just heard from Serapis that this is the roughest course he's ever been on. Uh, how would you assess the course? Uh, I don't know about that. Uh, it was pretty rough out there. Definitely that last lap, it got pretty rough. There's some some big ones that you had to watch out for. But uh, other than that, Fox Shocks worked great. Got them tuned up by SDG, and they uh, handled everything pretty great. So we're stoked. What's the strategy heading into tomorrow? Uh, tomorrow's just have a similar day like we did today. Just keep it together, no issues, and uh, try to get a strong finish and see where we end up in that points battle. Anything you like to add? Uh, I'd like to thank you, Theory, uh, Tisco, my car driver Igor, my wife and son, uh, my parents, uh, all of our sponsors for making this happen, and uh, Best in the Desert, Casey, all the volunteers, uh, they do a great job on uh, such a great event, so thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Here we go. Good day for you, Theory. All eyes were on Jeff Terzo in the championship chase, but Anthony, you come home to second. How'd you do it? Um, it was really rough out there. Um, you know, we just sucked our plan. We started kind of far back, um, so we just wanted to drive uh, our pace, and uh, really, we didn't want to beat two cars out here. That's the other two U30 cars, but um, if we could put in this weekend and really get up there, uh, that's the um, overall goal, so we're stoked. How would you describe the way the course is right now? We heard it was really rough. My gosh, from the first lap to the fourth lap, it roughened up a ton. We we got bucked a couple times pretty good. Um, and uh, I can't even imagine by tomorrow, it's it's going to be rough. So we're stoked. Our King Shocks are holding up. What do you do in terms of a setup to account for that, knowing it's going to be rougher? What do you do suspension-wise? So um, our truck's super stiff. Uh, we're running King Shocks. And... Um, 55 works really good in the, the big stuff. So qualifying didn't really go our way, but out there in the race course, that's what this thing's set up for. So we're stoked. Anything you'd like to add? I just want to thank my two, my three beautiful girls uh, who came out to watch me. I'm just so stoked they're here. And uh, let's go race tomorrow. Awesome, man. Congratulations. Quick stat just for me here. Who's the older brother, you or Jeff? I am. Two and a half years, but everyone thinks we're twins. Hey, how old are you? I'm 33. 33. Yes, 30, almost 31. And you're a fireman as well? Yep, we're that, both firemen. All three of us are. Brother Oswald. Awesome. And you're a father of three. Father of one, and then one on the way, which is going to be a girl. So I got one girl now, one on the way, and then the wife would be the third girl. The third girl. Thinking, there yeah. you go. Well, congratulations yeah. on a great run. Right on. Thank you. Matt's a brother too. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we're going to do the reveal? Yeah. Let's go do the reveal. Yeah. Can't oh, yeah. wait, man. Yeah. I saw you getting some big air. How was it for you? Thanks. Yeah, uh, it was pretty good overall. Uh, come in after the first lap. Uh, There's a car stuck on the berm, and we just came in under him, stuck in the soft stuff. So we lost a couple minutes there. A couple of trucks got by, but um, it was rough, and we'll try to go fast, keep it smooth. So. Good luck. We'll be ready for this gender reveal for your baby. Here we go. Cool team, we saw you. We, we saw you on the beginning. What happened there? Um, we're having some electrical issues with the throttle bodies on the motor. Uh, we lost all the control to the throttle body, so it just died. But you're able to limp it through, so huh? We were able to kill power, get them back, and then just fight it the whole time. Every couple turns, it would decide you couldn't use the throttle. So hard to go fast when you're not sure if you can. So you get it throttle. fixed tonight, get it ready for tomorrow? Sure hope so. <laughs> Good luck, guys. The whole youth theory team out here, uh, my co-driver Igor, my parents, my wife, my son cheer me on, uh, my niece, you know, all of our fans out there. Uh, Tisco for putting together a great truck for us. Uh, the Dugan's racing engine ran great. Fox shocks worked perfect. Uh, tuned up by SDG. Seal so. on the podium. All right. Hey, I, I tried to, to peek and see what you know, but I didn't. Uh, Mr. Grass. How you doing, buddy? Did you bring all this wind down from Canada? No, no, it's snowing up there. <laughs> Good job, man. You're right here in the hunt. You know, you got uh, 37 was in second. That might put you in third, okay? 
Oh, that sounds great. Yeah, I'm not sure where we finished up, but had to deal with some dust and throughout the couple of laps. But other than that, everything went really good. It's it's getting rough out there. It's pretty hammered up again. Well, it's always hit rough. Rough track, short track, 15 miles around. It's definitely rough. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, it's it's uh, definitely rough for sure. And try and stay clean and get to the finish line. Thanks to people. We're looking at a truck, BFG tires. Uh, How you doing? Beach. Congratulations. Thank you. I gotta say, you don't look pregnant though. We, it's coming. In. <laughs> it's coming in. We had to we had to keep it secret for a little while. He told me last race. He said keep it a secret for a while. He said we gotta tell all of our in-laws because it's gonna be on TV. Appreciate you coming out here, spending the whole year with us. Good job, Casey. As soon as I got out of the race truck, everyone knew why. Okay. I wasn't that secretive. So do you know the gender? Is this gonna be a surprise for you too? Yeah. Can't wait. The only person that knows is Jimmy, the co-driver. Oh next. man, can't wait. Yeah, Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. Those girls team. Anyways, Where's Anthony's girl? Um, right here? Oh, there they are. Uh, I want to thank King Shocks. Yeah. Made it smooth over that Fox cruising ground. Um, pretty rough out there, but this truck held up and uh, ready to go racing day two. All right, you got it. She, she wants a ride. All right, give it up for the young lady. Hey, what do you think? Hi. Hey, there we go. I have no idea. I'm out of here. Alright, well, maybe some other day. Alright, good job. Alright. Boy? Yeah. I'm feeling girl. I'm, I'm, say hope, girl. I'm hoping girl because there's a lot of boys in that family. Let's put a cheeseburger on it. I say girl, you say boy. Okay. You got a cheeseburger on it. Just uh, before we do this, listen up. I got a text from... Here's how the list goes down. You guys want to know the top four. Here's how we're doing it before we set up to do this. Uh, 35 is your unofficial winner. 55 followed by the 37. Check it out. Second and third. Okay, the 88 ends up fourth, okay? All right, I got to... Uh, boss, boss one? I need a camera person. I need somebody to do my iPhone. Who wants to do that while I talk to... I got it. We're going to do something here pretty cool. You know how I do, right? Hang on. I got... Uh, around here. Yes, we're, we're live on my website. I put, put it out to a lot of people. Let's give it up for these two beautiful people right here. Let's turn around. Okay. The, uh, you know, you and I talked yesterday, and and uh, is he is he? Don't look. Nobody look. Nobody's supposed to look. You want to do it real quick? Okay, we're gonna let's do it and reveal the child right now before it falls on the ground in Jimmy's face. You ready, uh, Andrew? All right, here we go. This is going to be their child. What is it gonna, how many people think it's going to be blue? How about pink for a girl? What do you want, boy or girl? I don't know. I have no idea. We said future wheel man or future co kitty. Okay. Well, <laughs> you're a but see, you're still a co. You know, you're co kitty. Yeah, right. But future. Future. All right. Here we go. Jimmy the hook. Oh, I didn't look. <laughs> Hey, what do, you, what do you think? You got a little boy, all right? You got a name already? No, we Nothing? Keep us in bro. We have dudes bro. <laughs> Such a, you know, it's always a pleasure interviewing you guys, you and Andrew, and you in the co-seat. You can't be in the co-seat for a while. But uh, let's give it up for this great team right here. Where's, uh, where's your mom and dad? Where's, what do you think, mom? You know... Wow, that's uh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, Jimmy, Jimmy's like, we got to do this quick for the regular interview because it's gonna pop out of the exhaust pipe. That was a pretty. I'm really happy that you asked me to do this. Thank you. It's always been a pleasure for you. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks everyone for supporting us. And we're stoked. We got a baby boy. Woo! 
talk to Andrew. What do you think, Andrew? Uh, good finish today for the uh, U Theory team. And uh, what do you think, baby boy? Stoked. You know, either way, I'm really happy, but subtly I want a boy. So, yeah. awesome. I was more nervous just trying to make sure we got here to the finish so we could do this. And uh, it was awesome. Thanks for everyone coming out and helping out. Um, overall, pretty smooth day, you know. We, yeah, you know, blue, blue on me too. We're all covered. Oh, yeah, it was, it was crazy. Yeah. No, it's, uh, yeah, it's for stowed. It's so awesome to see the whole family and she's so supportive and all this racing stuff. And, uh, this is perfect. We're gonna do it here this weekend. And, um, yeah, you know, good day. Jimmy rode with me for the first time and uh, had a little issue at the first stop. Got stuck in a burn and a couple other cars and lost the hood at one point. But hey, we had a clean run, super rough, stoked for Anthony and Jeff running clean and uh, you know, let's have fun and just do this business again. Who's using my iPhone? I don't wear my iPhone. Congratulations, Mom. How's How's, so how's, how's it feel? Oh, I'm so stoked. There you go. But tell yeah. Andrew to move over because oh. the little boy is going to come take his spot. I buddy. love it. That was awesome. <laughs> track was brutal. Track was rough, but that wasn't bad. The dust just kind of sat on the race course and that made it a little slower, but stoked. Overall, we're pretty stoked. Congratulations. That's his first time, right? In a trophy truck. How you doing, young lady? Wonderful. I thought that maybe Tony Smiley was driving his truck. I love it. What's your name? Carrie Smiley. Excellent, Carrie. I didn't know you were driving in this category. Great. Just moved up. Perfect. Well, how was the course for you? Um, it was fast. It was fun. It was rough. Perfect. Where are you guys out of again? We live uh, from Buckeye, Arizona. And how long have you been driving in this category? Uh, this is my second race. What do you think? How would you describe it? Um, I'm definitely still learning. So <laughs> I moved up from 6100. These go a lot faster. So I'm just trying to learn how to drive faster and get into those corners and get back on it. What's the biggest challenge going from trophy to, or 6100 to, to trophy? Realizing how fast you're going wow. when you get to the corner. <laughs> Excellent. Yes. Well, congratulations on a great day. Thank you. One more tomorrow. Congratulations. One more. What's your name, man? I'm, I'm Christian Bill. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. We weren't sure who was driving today. Where, where are you out of? We're out of Texas. Out of Texas, okay. Yes, sir. How many years you've been racing in this category? Oh, 15, maybe? 15. A lot of years. Wow. Yeah, I know. No, not always. Not, not always, always trophy, trophy truck, but yeah. How many years have you been racing total, like with all your motorsports experience? Uh, 20 years. 20 years. Where'd you start? Motors, uh, dirt bike. We're starting in dirt bikes. Yeah. How about that? Still ride dirt bikes. That's cool. Does, so. it, does that help keep you sharp? You think out here? I, I I don't know if that helps or if it what if anything helps. I just <laughs> my co-driver keeps me calm. He keeps He's an calm. awesome co-driver. And that's pretty cool. You guys got God is awesome on the side of the truck. Any story behind that? That is my father-in-law, and everything he does, he it, it's always through God, and that's his slogan. And so we have carried it through racing and in life. Congratulations on a successful day. Thank you so day. much. You we got appreciate it. it.
look at Harley Lettner's pits. They're replacing the third member, the entire rear end. They cracked the housing. Also suffered a couple flat tires. Ready to go. <laughs> Extra bullet. Beyond the racetrack, we just continue to lift up this community, our family, the strength of our, our businesses that make this happen. We just pray that you be the part of all of it. We just give you all praise. Amen. 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 Hey, what color is my hair? They're in the zone. They're in the zone. Were they looking at Instagram or getting ready for results? I think they're looking at Instagram. No, they're doing for, setting up for the timing. Guys, we're focused. Okay? <laughs> I can hear everything you're saying and they're I'm keeping, half deaf. They're keeping time. <laughs> It's a new day of racing, and look who's starting up front. Ray Griffith, congratulations. How'd you do it yesterday, Ray? Uh, well, we stuck to our plan. We put a little pressure on uh, on little Diener. He started first, and uh, we put a little pressure in the, in the first half of the first lap, actually, and then he turned it up, and uh, he actually was making time on me, but made a mistake and had a little issue, and uh, we got by him, and then we just we just held pace, and we turned it down just a little bit, and then just held pace and, and got it here. What's the strategy today? Because there's uh, going to be no one to put pressure on. You're out in front. Yeah, now the pressure's on me. So uh, we're, we're going to try to get Adam out of, the, out of the gate here. And as long as I get Adam out of the gate, then I'm just going to try to hold everybody behind me. Perfect. They, everybody's got to pass me uh, to beat me. So, so pretty much they're going to have to catch me, get through my dust, make time on me. And uh, as long as I can stink it, stink it up enough, make enough dust, i uh, got four laps to do. How old are you, Ray? 31. Out of? Huh? Where are you from? Oh, uh, down in California. And how many years in motorsports? Uh, 16. Greatest accomplishment in motorsports is? Uh, I've qualified on pole in this class one car and won uh, four Jeep, Jeep Speed Championships, which was, we started at the bottom. How many best in desert wins? Uh, honestly, I don't even know. I can't even, can't even count that. Excellent, man. Good luck to you. Real right. quick, just take me through some of the specs on your car. Just real quick. What motor, what suspension, and we'll let you uh, see. We got a red line, red, red line engine in it, Albans transmission, King shocks, method wheels, Toyota tires, JMR brakes, uh, all, all wrapped in a Jimco chassis. So it's a, it's a good piece. Let's good luck, go. bud. We'll let you shoot up. Have a all safe right. one today. Good luck. Think, man, how's crew feeling? Ah, we're good, man. You raise raise a rock star, like for sure. He's a he's a will man, hands down. So we just need him to get through this. We need we need a good weekend. We've been waiting a long time for a good weekend. Any setup changes overnight, or did you leave it alone? No, we left it alone, man. There's the, you don't want to fix it if it's not broke. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Right? Exactly. Good luck, guys. Thanks, man.
Well, big congrats, Adam Householder. How did you do it? How did you outlast this tough field and get in front of everybody? Um, you know, it is brutal. Me and uh, Ray Griffith started side by side. Okay, I'm sorry. Everything but go, the go button. Okay. Stand by, stand by. No problem. Take the mic out and ask the question again, please. I'm sorry. Okay. How were you able to do this? Uh, you know what? It, it's a rough day. Um, as long as you have a good uh, day one finish and you can start up front, um, it's not bad. Ray Griffith beat me off the line, which made it really tough with how dusty it is. And we just tried to stay close. Um, he had some issues. He was off to the side. Once we got ahead of him, we just kind of ran a pace to make to the finish line and uh, get the win for the weekend. Take me through your run. Any problems at all? What was the toughest part of the course for you? Um, the last two days, our, uh, our uh, gearbox has been running about 360 degrees on gear oil. Um, man, I, I give uh, Weddle and Albin's uh, props because this thing survived all two days of just beating it up. Um, roughest course is on the backside just because of how dusty it is. When you're trying to fight through the dust, it's single track and how windy and twisty it is. You just got to fight, fight for it, have a good car rider that calls out good turns and uh, try to push as hard as you can. Congratulations. Anything you like to add here? Nah, you know, I, I got to thank my guys, man. They work really hard uh, to make sure our cars run really good. Uh, my dad, you know, this is his car and he always allows me to drive it. Um, I love wheeling this thing for him. Um, now we'll get back after the trophy truck. Congratulations. Thank you. CJ, I'd like to be the first to congratulate you on a season championship. How does it feel? Yeah, thank you so much, man. It feels great. Um, whew, what a long year. These are these are not easy races to finish, let alone win. You know, we won a couple races this year, um, finished on the podium a couple times. So we just had a great year, and that's really what it takes to to uh, win the points here at Best in the Desert. You got to be consistent. You got to finish races. Um, I think we've proved that all year. Consistency always pays off in the end. Uh, I just got to thank all of our sponsors, General Tire, um, Jmar, All Seasons Marine, Jake's Fab Works, uh, Sunoco, Epco, 212, everybody that helps us out with this car, um, and Rigid Industries. Um, man, what a great year. We're pumped to be here. I got to thank my dad for funding this whole team and uh, really giving us this opportunity to come out here and win with a, with a great car every single race. So. Great job, all my pit guys, all year. It, it's such a team effort to make this happen and uh, we just couldn't be happier. For the second day in a row, the gentleman who started up, up front did not finish the race. How were you able to be so consistent and finish? Yeah, you gotta be smart out there. You know, these cars, most of the cars in our class are between six and 800 horsepower and you got way more motor than these cars can handle. So it's real easy to uh, overdrive these cars and, and they just don't live so you definitely have to find the balance between going fast but taking care of the car and make sure you get to the finish so I, uh, I think we found that combination this year and uh, we're looking forward to next season. Congratulations anything you'd like to add? Um, that's about it I gotta thank uh, my, my navigator Drew he rode with me every single race all year every mile um, this guy's been awesome all year. Yeah! Plus <laughs> champions, baby! And Woo! I gotta thank my, my girlfriend Journey for coming to all the races and always supporting us. Um, it's always nice having having all that support from my family and friends. So thank you, everyone. Congratulations. Good job. All right, Drew. There you go. <laughs> well, listen, Drew, I got a question for you. I was gonna request a scream out there. You're champion too, man. What's it? What's it feel like to have made it through this grueling season? Just stoked to help my buddy get it there. That's the that's the goal for me every time is just to make sure he does the best job he can do to go as fast as he can to be there. Congratulations, so, guys. Thank you. Woo. All right, Scott, you started fifth, and you have a, a pretty darn respectable finish here. Take me through the day. Well, we uh, we had a good start. Everything was going good. We, yesterday we were heating up and. Uh, Hit limp mode. Um, today, same thing. It started heating up again, so we had to cut back on our on our speeds a little bit. But uh, you know, we just we just got the car through. The course is rougher, a little more square. Um, just a great course, though. Great, great uh, uh, support out here. Best in the desert. You can't thank them enough. Um, all the people who helped me, man. Oh man, I just I said it yesterday. Uh, Donnie Kerr, his son Travis. 
Lumacraft helps me, Mastercraft, Fox, uh, you know, e everybody along the line. Raceline Wheels has been a supporter for us. Uh, Redline Performance, the motor, motor's running super great. Uh, we think we might have maybe a little too small radiator now. We just upped the horsepower. Um, learning how to left foot brake is a whole new thing. I got a torque converter for the first time, so. Uh, anyways, we just had a blast, I'll tell you. You know, it was so much fun and finishing is, uh, is just a great thing to do. Congratulations. Thank you so much. That's attention to detail, Brock. <laughs> wow. That's like a motocross trick there. Making sure you got a perfect launch. Perfect now. How about that? Ready to roll. How's the transmission? Everything fixed? Um, we think so. Put First a new trailer in it last night? Yeah, we ended up having some more problems with it last night, so. What happened? Um, I don't know. There's something wrong with they don't know what happened in the first one, but the second one, the link coach was wrong. So they've been messing with that all morning, and um, you know, first gear might be a little rough off the start, but we'll find out. It's kind of keeps going in and out of it once it pop out. So at least uh, second, third work good. So you have any idea where you have to finish to clinch this thing? I just gotta beat. Um, stay ahead on. I just gotta stay up here. You know, just stay up front. We're on a clean race, no problems, and um, should be good. Excellent, man. Good luck. Thank you. Who knows how first to go? But that's fine. <laughs> I'd rather have two and three than. It's slower and just let all the dust blow. <laughs> but uh, man, I just kept going down because the moment doing like 70, I'm just like going like. Uh, yeah. the end, the end the game, some good stories all the way around, but also the bottom just the Have a good race, right? Awesome. Got to say your prayers out there, huh? Absolutely. Love it. Um, new day, a little warmer, no wind. No wind. It is hot Change, out here. change anything for you? Uh, the wind. Mic check, mic check, mic check. All right, here we'll get you. You'll just look at me. He's not even there. Okay. You tell me when you're ready with the audio. Sounds good. All right, here we go. Uh, a new day. What's what's going on in the truck? What's going through your mind? Uh, definitely a new day. Uh, side by side with Brock today. Yesterday he started alone, and that worked to our advantage. We could watch him and take his lines and pick up some time so we have 15 seconds today a lead by 15 seconds which can be lost so fast so it really it really comes down to if uh, whoever wins the start here if, if he wins the start I doubt I can keep up with him with the dust and everything and honestly we're gonna have to settle for a second place unless he has a mechanical failure again yeah if we get if we get the, the, the start here then I'm not gonna let him buy like just you can't, you know. I'll do all I can to make sure. Then I got 15. Then he has to pass me and make 15 seconds on me, and that's a lot harder. He might make a mistake in the dust. He's got to play the game that he's going for a championship too. I don't know if he's going to take that risk, but he's a wild guy, so he might. Um, it's going to be right here. But whoever hits this first corner best, and the next one, I'm probably going to get the race. Any changes to your truck? Okay. Yeah. Any changes to your truck for today? Uh, no, it was in really good shape. Everything, we, we did a once over and uh, transmission's great, everything. So it's exactly the same as yesterday. Added some fuel, but we're running the same exact package. Same tire pressures, we changed nothing. We thought it was competitive. Uh, it obviously won yesterday. I know they were changing their transmission last night. You know, so, you know, doing big changes like that, you know, you don't have any test time, could be problems. So. You know, he might have a mechanical problem today, and, and I'm confident that this Camber truck is not. It, it's really well-rounded and, and running really, really well. Temperatures are very cool. It's gonna count on the first corner. <laughs> that's, that's very, that's great stuff. That's compelling. Now, these guys are fighting for a championship, like you said. Does that factor into your decision at all? Are you concerned about that? Does that, or you're just flat out willing to win this thing? I guess what I'm trying to say is, do you have any respect for the championship chase, or is it just all about you winning? Uh, I'm gonna say it's all about us winning because we're not in the championship race. We didn't race the first two races, so we aren't in it at all. Like, we're not even on the map. So we're going for a win. Um, I'm hoping that Brock doesn't wreck us. In the meantime, possibly wrecking himself. I don't think he will do that. Um, I won't wreck him. I don't race like that. I will not wreck his car. I know how expensive these things are. Uh, I know he's going for a championship. I also know Travis Chase is going for a championship. They're both neck and neck. 
I, I definitely won't ruin anybody's day. I will settle for a second place and we'll regroup and try to get them next time. Good luck to you. Thank you. There we go. These racers run about 35, 40 pounds in these. The lower your air pressure, sometimes you can get better traction, you can get off the line better, but you also make yourself more susceptible to flats because those sidewalls will stick out and potentially poke some rocks. That infer was given to me by the great Mr. Kyle. Thank you, Kyle. Did I get it right? <laughs> you got it right. Anything else about tire pressure that's interesting? No, just you, you just can't hit rocks. No matter what the tire brand, you have to miss the rocks. Very important. But a little extra air will help you, right? It will. You might, you may bounce off of it and get lucky and not get a pinch flat, but still can't hit them. Now, what if you got too much in there? Are you just going to spin off the line? Yep, yep. No traction. It's like having a metal tire. There's no flat spot on the dirt to actually grab. You'll just be spinning. So it's a game, you know. You wonder what he's got over there. General tire work pretty closely with you. With that? A little bit because of his transmission issues. Race course official said that's okay. Mr. Brock, are we ready for Mr. Brock? Huh? Yes, Mr. Brock, okay, first in that moto, second overall, and most importantly, my friend, how's it feel to be best in the desert season champion? You know, it feels good. Um, you know, I was kind of looking forward to this day today. Um, you know, we had a fast truck yesterday, and we had some mechanical issues that brought us home in second, so we fixed that last night, and I was like, you know what, I'm ready for uh, what Sunday has to offer, and I wanted to close out this weekend with a win and the championship but um i think we got beat by a little bit for the for the overall for the day um which is a bummer you know we had a we had a good run keeping about 50 seconds to a minute on them all day and i was gonna kind of keep it there just running super smooth and conservative and then um right there that last lap the, for the last few miles i got stuck behind a stuck behind a lapper and i couldn't couldn't get up close to him or anything because it was so dusty ended up hitting a one of those huge walls and the right front's all jacked up, so we figured out uh, let's just bring it home from there and um, you know, get this championship. Mechanically, you were a little concerned about the truck, everything hold up, no transmission issues or anything? Yeah, no, I knew it was going to be fine, and uh, you know, the truck ran good all day today, and you know, I was pumped on it. I was like, yeah, you know, we should get this win. Um, you know, I was being super easy on it, being super conservative, and um, you know, we caught that lap traffic, hit a wall, and uh, messed up the right front pretty good stuff but we just uh stayed in the dust and uh brought her back I'm not sure not sure how close it is i heard he cut the track here at the end missed two jumps trying to 
make up some time. So we'll see what they do about that and uh, where we end up. And we heard it was just a tight cat and mouse battle between you guys. Tell me about some of the points where you got close, some of the points where you were able to make a pass. Yeah, he, uh, he got the better line on the jump on the start. So I, uh, I had the outside and he got me on the jump, but I followed him through all the infield stuff. And then, um, you know, right before we started heading out to the schools, right before the first road crossing, he took, uh, took with this other line and it was a little bit slower. So I ended up passing him there and um, I pretty much never saw him from there. I you know the, the guys were really back and forth. We had a, you know, about 50 seconds to a minute lead. At one point, we, you know, we fell down a little bit. We caught another lapper. And, um, you know, besides that, I'm pumped. Um, you guys have been working their butts off all all weekend and uh glad i can repay him with this championship congrats man anything you want to add no i just gotta give out the best of the desert for everything they do and um you know all the guys every jake and Stu, and carlos you know there's so many guys that come and josh you know there's all them i gotta thank them for um you know being here all the pit stuff i gotta thank eric he rode with me today and um you know he drove with me a little bit here and there this year and um you know met the race wheels they do uh, they do so much for us and um excited to see what, what we got to offer next year. Congratulations, man. Thank you. There you go. Off the top of your head, do you know do you know how many championships that is total? Um, just desert or? Every, all, everything in your career, because you're 19, right? Yeah, I'm 19. You know, I'm not many, sure. How many motorsports championships have you won, including all the way down when you were a kid? This is my third, third season of desert, and this is going to be my third season of getting the championship, so. That's my desert side so far. And, this is your uh, third best in the desert championship? Yep. Wow. I've only raced it three years. So. How many amateur championships did you have in other forms? Um, in short course racing, I'm trying to think. I probably got, let me think. One, two. Probably have like five or six, I think. Wow. Around there, so. so you're talking almost 10 championships before 9, 420. That's pretty impressive. Yeah, so it's been good. And, Who's your uh, co-driver? Eric Delaney. <laughs> He's just you mentioned out. him, so I want to get shot him. Yeah. Congrats, guys. Thank you. Thank you. You won the day. Congratulations. You told us how important it would be to get the whole shot. You got the whole shot. Take me through that and the entire race. We got the whole shot. We did have a little mishap on counting down at the beginning. We actually went off the line and then backed up a little bit. Ended up getting the whole shot. But Brock is an amazing driver, and that truck is very fast. He got me again at mile four, and I had nothing for him. And we held on for dear life all day, and it came down to we had about a 50 second. We were 50 seconds back from him, and he got caught by lap. He caught lap traffic, and he couldn't get by him. And we were able to reel that gap in, and it was just perfect timing. I'm sure he's super pissed. It worked out in our favor. Um, it was a good day. The truck was working great, but we'll take it. I mean, it's just racing, you know. The lap traffic is part of racing, and, and it worked out today in our favor. Any mechanical problems at all with the truck? Anything? Hiccup? Uh, no mechanical problems. This truck really works very well. Um, I do think I did get pulled on a couple straightaways by him, and I think we're, we're you know, me and Brock are playing with different gearing, and it's just part of the the game that we're playing with each other and uh, you know so he had a couple good spots and I had some good spots no problem Sean was on point today it was, uh, it was all you could ask for I don't want to look at this thing from a, a pessimistic standpoint but you, you got to realize you're the hottest driver in this class right now you won Vegas Torino you won this are you wishing you would have been able to enter those first couple races it is what it is um, yeah, of course, it'd be cool to enter the first couple of races, but I was still getting my truck ready, making the swap from the trophy truck to 6100 before we entered Silver State. So it was a timing thing for us. And uh, I, I've never gone for a championship before, so I wouldn't even know how to approach that. I've always just gone out to win every race. I mean, it looks like we would have got it. We've had three wins. Maybe we could have got the championship, but maybe next year. That's the big question. To finish the season like this, are you going to be ready and contend for a championship next year? Yeah, it's up in the air with Camber, what races they want to do, my truck. I know we're going to be a partner with my truck. Um, I don't know if we're going to do a full season. It's an expensive sport. And I have to work a lot to, to pay for it. You know, myself, I don't have any sponsors. These guys do. Maybe they're going to want to race some and we team up. 
I'm not quite sure what to expect there, but uh, we're going to try because we would like to maybe have that number one plate someday. Never had it. So. Great job. Anything you'd like to add? I uh, just thank the Camberg team and all their sponsors and my family for supporting me, getting me to where we're at. Uh, a lot of money, a lot of effort on our part, and uh, it's just nice to see it coming together now. And uh, it feels good. It feels good to finally be winning, you know, because it's been a long time. Congratulations. Thanks. Let me get a shot of your co driver here because uh, and a major, major championship update development. Adam Lund not running today. Blown motor we're hearing Blown from motor. these fine gentlemen. Wow. Do you guys know what happened at all? I don't really know. I just know it happened right before the road crossing. Oh, oh really? Yeah. But I thought they finished. No, they didn't finish. Oh, Lund did not finish. They blew a motor. So I think they it was finished. probably like a lap short. Okay. Last lap, I want to say. Oh, Blown yeah. motor and no spares. That's why he's wow. biting it out for everybody. Thanks, guys. Great run out there for Ryan Hancock. Ryan, tell me about how you were able to get third place. Uh, today we, well, yesterday we started eighth, and uh, we could, we uh, got up to third. And then uh, today we kind of just stayed in third the whole race. We had some lap traffic to get around, but we got around them, and uh, we just kept it together. It was, a, it was a good race. How rough was the course out there? It got really bad. I don't know how, this, how the trophy truck guys are going to do, but uh, it's bad. It's really bad right now. It's square big holes but uh you know it's fun uh, we like we really do like coming to this race though any mechanical problems at all for you yes uh broke the steering uh coming into the infield and so we had no power steering the last uh, lap and we just fought through it and got through it so good day congratulations anything all right like that no thank you uh for uh all the support that we get and uh you know jordan over here preps the truck and uh, he does a heck of a job and we uh we appreciate it Great job. You good? Care? Thank you. Okay, Jordan, let me get a shot of you, man. And the guys get mentioned. Stand by. It takes me that long to focus. <laughs> how, how old are you? How old are you? Uh, I am 43. From? Yuma, Arizona. Yuma, Arizona. How many years have you been involved in motorsports? Oh, shoot. Uh, since I was young, 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 young. So really young? Yeah, yeah. What's your greatest accomplishment in motorsports? Uh, we won this race last last year, right. so uh, we really like this track. So uh, we'll take a podium. We're, we're good this year. Uh, this weekend, so. What's your occupation? Uh, car dealer. We own uh, Alexander Ford. It's on the side of the, oh, cool. the truck. So. so we're coming to you for some Fords. Oh, right? yeah. There Please do. Excellent. And uh, final thing is, what are your hobbies outside of racing? Uh, love the river. Uh, we have boats and uh, love to uh, be out on the water outdoors and hunting and all that good stuff. So. Congratulations. Thank you're, you. You're Mr. Consistency out there. You did it again. Tell me about how you were able to pull it out today. Today was a good day. Uh, we just got out of the uh, out of the gate in front of our competitor Chase and uh, got us in some clean air. Uh, we got held up on the third lap, but uh, made it to the finish. We got, a, we got a strong fourth and finished third for the year. Great season for you! Congratulations. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate it. God bless. Nice job. Thanks. We're here with the man who's been busy this weekend, Mr. Brian Folks, son of the late great Casey Folks. Brian, we're having a great weekend. We got one more race left to go. Wanted to get some extra information about how your father ended up here in Laughlin, how we ended up with a tour stop here that is so different from all your other races. Well, I think um, the inception of this race, I believe Laughlin uh, Chamber of Commerce came to my father and wanted to bring, uh, there was a different organization that brought this race here originally and that organization stopped doing the event and there was a void for several years and I believe the Laughlin Chamber of Commerce came to my dad and uh, asked my dad if he would bring the, the race back and they negotiated the program and I think ultimately for my dad the appeal was is you know Best in the Desert is, is a racing series we have a series and uh, a lot of our events are point to point or long distance events I think by adding this event to our series, add some diversity to the event. And, um, you know, this is, albeit as off-road racing, but it's it's much different than the, the long distance point to point race. This is kind of a sprint race. It's two days of racing. So if you have a bad day one, you can come back out in day two and redeem yourself. And uh, it just adds diversity to the best in the desert series. You know, this is kind of a sprint race. Whereas those long distance races are, are you know, more of attrition and you have to obviously go fast to win, but there's a lot of attrition that comes into play. Whereas this kind of racing 
It's kind of, uh, you know, hanging. you're out there for an hour and a half on a short course. It's hanging out and, you know, may the, may the fastest guy win, so to speak. That's great. And, you know, me being a motorsports guy, I'm looking around and your series is so unique. This feels more like a traditional race in that everybody's camped in the same spot, the spectators are all here. Is this almost a way to give back to the spectators and that people can take lawn chairs up there on the hill and they can be there all day? Vegas Torino, you can't really do that, unfortunately. No, that's true. I mean, that, that adds to the uniqueness of this race. I mean, Vegas Torino's great. I mean, that's 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 a funny e event in and of itself because, you know, the, the, the race teams, everybody likes that that adrenaline of following the race whereas this race it's a little more relaxed it's kicked back everything's located in one place and uh those race team guys who who don't normally get to see the action because they're going pit to pit and they're only seeing their vehicle come in into the pit and then out of the pit yeah they get to uh feel more a part of the race because they're seeing the race what's going on there's a lot better spectatorship so and then also the the, the town of laughlin it really adds the infrastructure here, adds to the, the possibilities that, you know, what we look for in the future is we, we see this event growing into uh, one of the premier off-road racing uh, events in, in off-road racing. Well, I'm sure they love having you. That's a lot of hotel rooms, meals out, fun in the casino. Anything else you would like to add or pass on about what's going on with Best in the Desert or this particular event? Uh, this particular event, no, we're working hard. I think we uh, we had some great meetings this week and uh, talking about the future of this event and all the opportunity that that it presents. And we're very we're very positive going into into talks here post race about how we can grow this event and, and again make it one of the premier events in off road racing. Love it, man. Anything you like to add? No, that's it. Thanks so much. Thanks for everything you do. I see your whole your whole this staff is, here. This is my brother. Oh man, my nice to meet Darryl. you. I'm Very the other nice half. to meet you. <laughs> I, I, you know, I've only been around for a short period of time, but I can't tell you how many comments I've heard about what an awesome dude Casey was and how much love he had for it. So it's really cool that you guys are keeping this thing going. Thank you guys so much. We appreciate it. Thanks, Josh. Good luck, man. Any changes from yesterday or just? No, we're just gonna go out and try to do the same thing again. Uh, we looked the truck over last night and, uh, you know, same game plan. We're gonna try to go out and get clean air, um, beat the 55 truck off the line, and uh, hopefully we have a smooth day. Did you learn anything about that flat that could help you avoid a flat today? Yeah, you know, uh, th there are rocks out there, uh, so it's just something we gotta be aware of. Um, you know, make sure, uh, make sure we have a clean day. Good luck, boys. Thank you. How you doing, Mr. Jeff? Doing good. Hey, do we have any update on what needs to happen? Do we, are we down to a certain scenario for you to win the championship? Um, I don't know. I don't know. There's a lot of there's a lot, there's so many different factors. It it depends. I think. Do you have a personal goal of where you have to finish a certain position or better? Um, I want to be on the podium for sure at the end of the day. So we'll see how it shakes out. Excellent. Do you know how? Any idea how far ahead you are in the points? I have no idea. It's, it's got to be cool. So you got to just go, close. Out, yeah. go out there and do your best. Yep, that's Good. the plan. Good. Did you learn anything yesterday that's going to help you today? Um, I mean, the course is rough. I think today the dust is going to be even worse. So I think we got to run a clean pace and just keep the truck together like we did yesterday and we'll uh, have a good finish. Good luck. Thank See you. you. Finish. There's the fast Canadian. How you doing? Good, good. We got these boys up here talking about championship, but how much would you love to play spoiler and win this thing? Oh, that would be pretty awesome. It's, we've got it. It definitely is a challenge to try and get that done, but it's not out of the realm of possibility, I guess. What'd you learn about <laughs> this course yesterday? That'll help uh, you there? Just, uh, I've, I ran it through my mind a few times last night, and. I know a few places we can pick up some speed, so we'll see how it goes today. Excellent, Tracy. What kind of motor are you running in? Uh, running a Dugan small block Chef. 
Excellent. Yeah. Good luck to you. Thank you. Here we go again. Team Rathole always ready to go. You guys ready? Yes, sir. Excellent, man. What's the strategy? Uh, I think we got some of the gremlins worked out that we had yesterday, so hopefully just uh, keep a good pace running clean. what was plaguing you yesterday? Uh, we had some programming issues with the motor, so every three, four, five turns it would uh, basically stall for about five seconds and then we'd have to restart and go. So just computer issues or mm -hmm. yeah. electrical? Like, what would yeah. you do to fix it? Um, guys over at Danzio came over this morning and helped us out a little bit, so I think we're good to go. Good luck, man. What's your co-driver's name? This is Bart. Excellent. Your full name again? Uh, Billy Wilson. That's right. Good luck, Billy. Right. Last question. Hey, what kind of motor are you running this thing? It's a V10. V10? Yeah. Yeah, you'll notice the sound. It, it sounds, sounds so much different. Right. Naturally yep. aspirated? Yep. Are you the only V10 in the category? I believe so. So what kind of V10? It's a, like a Viper base V10. No snap. Yeah. Why'd you guys pick a V10? Um, a little more torque, something different, a little something out of the box. So. Where are you out of? Um, uh, originally from Texas. Texas. How yep. old are you? Um, 34. Occupation? Uh, mechanic. Mechanic, so yeah. you know all about you. Right. you yeah. like, have you ever been in a V8? Uh, yeah. Yep. How would you compare so. the V8 to the V10? Um, they've got their places here and there, so. Once. Durable? Right. Is this, is, can the V10, does the V10 have any durability issues? Or? A little bit, yeah, it's a little more temperamental. Gotcha. So. You ever thought about going to anything crazy like a turbo, like we saw yeah. one of the guys in Vegas Arena? I'm more of like stick with what works and uh, let it finish the race. So. Excellent. Good luck with you guys. Have a safe trip. V10. I knew this sounded different. It's the 81 rat hole. Got Team Matney. How you doing, man? I haven't had a chance to talk to you this weekend hardly. We're doing I'll... good. Doing good. Trying to get rid of some gremlins in the truck, but other than that, we're okay. What gremlins are you fighting? Uh, electrical gremlins, steering servo, just odd ends. Really? So were you able to get it all rectified last night? We hope so. We're going to find out here in just a little bit. What would you learn on this course that could help you today? Well, dust is what's killing us. We need a lot of wind as far back as we are. So uh, other than that, we need some wind. Is the vision tougher here than other places we go to? Yeah, I mean, it's just... It's such a short race. It's really a sprint for everybody, and they, uh, you know, everybody's in the dust, so it just makes it difficult. Good luck to you, man. Anything you'd like to add? Thanks, sir. Now we're all good. Good luck. Smiley, ready to go. Hi, what's your name, sir? I'm Jason. Jason Gaunt, my brother. Never come. Hey, hey, give me the full name one more time. Jason Gaunt. Where are you from? Torrance, California. How old are you? I'm 23. Did you run yesterday? Would you drive? No, Carrie. Carrie. That's what I thought. Threw me, threw me a loop. Yep. So Carrie. they let you in the seat today. Yeah, I got. To, I do. I do the long straw, so I got to go in today. The long straw. I got the long. Straw. Have you done any type of pre-run at all? Nope. Nope. He has. He rode with Carrie yesterday. But... So you're gonna be relying on him big time. Huh? Absolutely. What's your background in motorsports? I uh, started in circle track sprint cars and then uh, started racing off-road in 2012. And we have our own spec truck and, and uh, got to drive Vegas to Reno in this truck, so it's been a pretty, pretty, pretty fun race. What time? What type of motor do we got in here? Uh, this is a Dugans. 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 Good luck the to only, gentlemen. The only, the only motor in motorsports right now is Well, we, we, told, we just talked to Rathole and they got a V10. What do you think about that? Is it a Dugan? It's it's probably not. Dugan. not. <laughs> then it ain't a motor. Good luck. He likes his Dugan. Everybody ready to go. There he is. There's a man with a smile on his face. Oh, of course. Of course. Here we go. Day two. What did you learn yesterday about I, this course? I learned the uh, course is rough. Yeah, you got to keep the truck in one piece, pick some good lines, and stay out of the dust. Okay. It was fun, man. Um, I'm impressed. You No mechanical problems for you, right? Yeah, I mean, we're, we're just trying to keep the truck in one piece and finish the race. And yeah, definitely, we, you learned a lot from qualifying. And, you know, we're, we're excited, dude. So, good job, Kit. Have awesome. a nice ride. Thank you. Kid living a dream, climbing in. We are just minutes away, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to know in the comments, would you do this? Would you do this? Wow! Good luck. Good luck. All right, you see it? Like you said, just have fun, because that's all of it.
We, we've got some uh, body issues over here, don't we? Two bodies. Oh boy. <laughs> What'd you guys do? End up uh, getting the zip ties out and no, no, doing no. what you could? We're going to test this ability to make it just like it is. How about it, right? No zip ties. Oh, zip it, ties are extra weight. It's not a beauty contest, right? No, no thank God, look. <laughs> so I take it you didn't have an extra body, huh? No. Okay. No, I, mean, I don't want to wreck it today with a new body. You Keep know, the old that, body on a, here and you won't wreck it. That's a good point. It's such a rough and brutal course. Do you think there's any disadvantage to not having a fresh body on there? Or? Nah, just hoping the hood doesn't crack up. I'm hoping the hood doesn't crack up and end up in our face, but I'm not going to run without it. I don't like to run without the hood. I understand that. Good luck to you gentlemen. Thanks, man. Safe try. We got the whole crew ready. Uh, you don't, you, are you excited for this man to hit the track or what? I am. I, is, hey, starting in the back, we're sorry, we were worried about it yesterday. We saw you from the side of the road. We're like, oh man, what happened to Steve? You know what? Uh, we just we caught a rock in the uh, the belts and lost the power steering, and uh, the rock was jammed up in the belt system, and we couldn't get the rock out, and and it made for a 30, 45 minute pit stop, and then we had no hood, so we just left the hood there, and then we took off, and I'll be darned if we didn't get more rocks on the belts, and so uh, just a day of throwing belts and put us back uh, quite a few positions. And so, uh, I don't know, it's gonna be tough to win the championship now, but I think uh, if we just try, just try to get around this course and see what happens, that's all we can do. You never know what's gonna happen out yeah, there, that's for sure. Day two in Laughlin's always a deal breaker for everybody, right, you never know. You feel like the truck's on point now, everything's good? Yeah, we made some adjustments. We uh, made, a, the course was so rough yesterday, so we kind of gave it our rough suspension setup as, as opposed to uh, what it has been in the past, a little more faster and tighter. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. I, I think it's going to be really good. we got to kind of raise the front end up a little bit and do all that. So. Perfect, Steve. How many years have you been in this sport again? Uh, well, I've been uh, driving the, the trick trucks since uh, 07. 07. Yeah, and prior to that, what did you do? I uh, drove in Broncos, Rangers, uh, Pro Trucks, uh, Class 8s. Uh, how long Stockholm. have you been racing? Uh, I, my first full season was in 94. Wow, yeah. been at it a long time. Long what, time. What kind of motor in this truck? Uh, this has a, a Ford uh, four, 455 cubic inch uh, Dugan race motor. And uh, this one's kind of like a spread board Chevrolet, if you will. They, they got up to about 850 horsepower. So I know a lot of these other guys got all these big blocks and all this stuff. And so we're gonna, we're gonna run just our, uh, our uh, reliable Ford motor and uh, uh, put a little lower, lower gears in and try to run with these guys. This is one of the only Fords in the class, right? Uh, there, there's uh, there's more, I don't know, but I think there's like four or five, but uh, four or five. a lot of guys are, uh, you know, we're trying other stuff and whatnot, but uh, no, we're, we're all for it, so. Well, let's hope for some better luck today, man. Good luck, yeah, have a thanks, safe man. ride out thanks there. so much. Good job, Steve Oligas. Is he going to do it? Is he going to bring it home? He is. There you He's go. Got, this. got a good cheering yeah, section. Up, uh, all the unlimited trucks ready to go. Big Andrew. I got some bad news for you. Uh -oh. I talked to your mother-in-law yesterday, and she said, "Watch out when that baby grows up. That uh -oh. baby's taking a seat in this." I know. I'll be I'll be sitting on the sidelines for sure. Uh, congratulations! That was a great day. Thank you. How are you feeling today? Good. Yeah, stoked. Definitely less nervous. You know. Um, Surprising situation rough. here. I hear how rocky and destructive this course is, and you've got no hood on this machine. Yeah, I lost the hood. We. Uh, no extra body. Had a little bobble. No. It's Laughlin, you figure you're gonna lose some some form of body body paneling, but yeah, I thought it was bouncing around last lap or so, and then about a couple miles from the finish, and that last fast section, it came off at about 100, so. Oh well, um, yeah, we're good, stoked, big boy, and had some fun last night, and uh, fresh tires, wiped her down, and. Fresh, to, brand new fresh tires. Yeah, just be Love safe. It. It's only, you know, I only did 65 miles yesterday, but it's pretty, Driving pretty aggressive here that whole time. I'm, you know, pushing hard at all the races, but some, you know, some more than others, you'll pace yourself a little bit. So we figured, better safe than sorry, and uh, we're stoked. Truck's good. It's Mason, Mason two-wheel drive truck is awesome, and uh, yeah, we're gonna have some fun. With your family in the championship battle, do you have any special assignments? Are you out there to play blocker? <laughs> no, no, no team orders. Um, now it's a big day. Yeah, Jeff's. Sitting in a good spot. Um, I know if, if Voss wins again, like he did yesterday, or yeah, so if Voss wins, Jeff has to get third to maintain. Oh, we were wondering about the, the situation. Okay, so. so if Voss wins, Jeff needs a third or better. Right. Wow. So, he's, this, so this, good, this is tight. Yeah, they're in a good position. This you is know, tight. They, they all had to I mean Anthony. He did awesome yesterday. So super stoked that 
you know, both the whole team did well overall, and those two guys ran ran up front. So um, I'm just chasing them down from from back here. So good luck. Man. It's going to be a good by. show. Yeah. How old are you again? Uh, I'm 29. 29. Are yeah. you a fireman as well? I am. That's yeah. right. All three of you guys firemen. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. That's they're cool. uh, they're both in uh, work for Newport Beach, and I'm in Burbank. So. How's it going with your co-driver? I know it's only second race without Danielle, right? Yeah. So um, yeah, Jimmy Hooks riding with me this weekend. Um, Did, was he Vegas he was, Reno? No, no. So Vegas Reno had Drew Drew Becerra from Mason. Oh, so uh, no, he's good, oh, and uh, yeah, it's awesome. We're stoked. Oh, Call goes it's out, my stuff. friend. Good All luck right. to you. Have a safe ride. Cool. We'll see you at the finish. Oh, it's time to rock and roll, ladies and gentlemen. Time to send these unlimited trucks down the road. What are they saying? Four minutes? Four minutes to call? 220? 220 start. 220 start. Good luck, gentlemen. Thank you, bud. Anything you learned yesterday, it's going to help you today? Woo. Just go fast. Yeah. More experience. More fun. Good luck. It's go time. It's go time. Coors Light team's ready. Mr. Serapis, you said this was the roughest course you ever ran in your life. Are you ready to go out and win this thing? That's my question. Yeah, we uh, changed the transmission and the steering ram last night. and We'll see what happens. Got to get out in front of Turzo in the 37 truck and be third on the road physically and then hopefully just uh, start picking them off. And Hopefully, I mean, I don't wish bad luck on anybody, but we, we need a little bit of bad luck on the guys in front of us to have any shot of depending on our win last year. So You said you may just go for it, try to break the truck. Is that the strategy? Not gonna... try to break the truck, but definitely go for it. Good so, luck, thank you. Have a safe ride. Oh, you can feel the excitement. It's unlimited truck time. What do you think, Bridget? You going to pick a winner? Who's winning? I know. You had to guess. There, there is too many variables here. Anything could happen. That's true. That's true. We're closing in on a start. Enjoying it? Of course. There you go. Hey guys. A lot of motorhomes, a lot of camping. A lot of people making a long weekend out of this. potentially for him.
Let's see if we can see the gap here. Jason has really opened one up on the field. Here we go, here comes second truck. We're talking about 45 seconds back. And then Anthony Terzo. Tribute this to you said they're jumping further than ever. I think they're just gaining confidence. Gaining confidence through the years. I mean, they do this once a year, and I, I can tell you where Jason landed. Nobody's ever landed there before. Wow. Push starts on the right. That's where he landed. Oh my right gosh. Marker. It's pretty big. here you guys I appreciate you uh, being up here because no you tipped me off let me get up here and get the good view exactly it's prime real estate what's your name my name is Scott excellent your name Lucas where are you guys from Southern California moved to Utah, Utah. excellent how, how much are you enjoying watching this best in the desert race um 10 out of 10 10 out of 10 we're gonna see you out here someday yes I'm excited <laughs> to see that you have a good time oh yeah great time perfect thanks. weather thanks so much guys enjoy yourself yeah, no wondering who this is God is awesome is awesome machine man i gotta give you credit you're awesome too you knew from a mile away who that was yep. how much longer do you think for voss comes through um, about two minutes two minutes all right you know the gap and everything i love it time record for that jump no lip on that thing either guys that's just pure speed big gap for Voss Let's see who's next is it Anthony or Jeff
Mountainside folks down here on the ground are estimating Jason Voss's total distance, 250 feet. 200, 250 feet of air. Kit, former motocross racer coming up. We're heading back to the finish, but the gap is unbelievable. Voss is flying. This might be record time for the course. It's gotta be a three minute gap. Look at the gap. Unbelievable gap. Here it comes. Second place, you're talking a couple minutes later. Putting on the number one hat, Jason. Flawless performance. You tell me if I'm wrong. Yeah, no, uh, great day. We had, we had a real good day here in Laughlin. Uh, you know, I can't thank everyone who helps us on this team. Uh, not only our crew members, uh, but you know, Method Race Wheels is down here sporting best in the desert, putting on this race. BFG tires, K shocks, uh, out power steering. Everyone down the side of this truck. Uh, this is a new truck for us this year, so we've been working the bugs down a bit and uh, to come out here. 
qualify first and sweep both days. Uh, you know, flawless performance on the truck. So it was good. We're looking forward to next year. Can you remember a day in your career where you were this dominant? Um, no, you know, it's hard to remember. Uh, we've been out here a while. Um, you know, we've, we've had some good races and some big wins, but uh, to come out and sweep the weekend, um, I think that's the first for us. I think last year, one of the storylines we're talking about are the problems you were having with the new truck. It's safe to say you put all that behind you? Yeah, we had a real good run, uh, Vegas to Reno a couple weeks back. Um, we, we had a, a, some mechanical issues in qualifying, and we ended up not finishing qualifying, starting dead last at Vegas to Reno. And, uh, you know, we fought back to a second place finish. So come out here and uh, follow that up with another good performance of the truck, and uh, we're ready. How about the big air on the jump? <laughs> yeah, I think we should lift a little bit next time. <laughs> Uh, we, we hit it pretty hard the first two laps, and uh, I don't know, one of them, uh, I only feathered it just a little bit, and, and uh, we went a little far. We felt that one. Congratulations. Anything you like to add? Uh, no, you know, Donnie, my co-pilot here, uh, rode with me all season, did a great job. He saved us yesterday uh, by getting us to the finish line and still holding on uh, first place. And, you know, my mom and dad, the whole team, uh, it's a team sport down here. Congratulations. Thank you. for you here, just talking specifically about that jump. We're standing over there. Everybody's in awe. They're saying that's the furthest the street jump has ever been jumped. <clears throat> the, the lip was good this year. You know, it made it real nice to fly off of it. Some years it's, it's been a little funny. Um, I take the same line every year. Uh, don't do anything different. Um, you know, this year, though, we got Kevin Croyer, big block engine in here. And uh, I'm sure we were carrying a little more speed than we thought. How we fast? I think we had uh, 122. Yeah, maybe 122. 120, how fast approaching the jump? 122. 122. So. What was it like from your perspective? Uh, it was pretty cool. I, I was watching the numbers every time we come up to it. I like to see what we're hitting it at, and we passed it about 100 feet before the lip, and it was still climbing, and he was still in the power, so I what knew was, that was going to be a good one. What was the exhilaration like, flying like that? 250 feet, they think? Smooth. King shocks, man. No, the truck felt great, you know, taking off, finishing, it flew, flew good all day. Congratulations. So, thank you. Congratulations, I see you're limping here with a flat tire. What happened? Well, uh, we we're coming around the infield and I saw my brother coming the other way. So I knew I had to beat him by 36 seconds. So I punched it over the first jump, got sideways, punched over the second one, and then we almost went over, saved it. And then the third one, again, almost went over and got a flat tire and I had to limp it in. And I think he got us because of that, so bummer. Well, what I love about you guys, there's no, he's competing for a championship. There's no team orders here. Uh, hold on. Hold on, let's get you. Okay. There's no team orders here, is there? <laughs> no. Of course, we want to go out and beat our teammates, but um, we are teammates, so we hope everyone does well. Um, if he finished, I think, third or better, he's got the championship, so it's pretty cool for him. So maybe my flat tire helped him out. So we'll see. Any, any other issues out there besides the flat tire? Was it, I know Voss was just, he was on point. He was hard to catch. Yeah, Voss is really hard to catch. Um, I, at first I was in a little dust, of course, then he, he took off and I had some uh, clean air. There were pockets where I caught some dust and I had to slow down, but um, yeah, by no means was Voss holding me up. Anything you'd like to add? Uh, I just want to thank uh, all my sponsors. Uh, thank you, Theory Racing. Thank my three beautiful girls for coming out here and watching me. Congratulations. Thanks. giving me new respect for co-driver duty. <laughs> now, let me get this straight. When you guys get a flat, does he jump out and help you? No, we have a jack system that's not working right now. I was going to say, how do you manhandle this thing by yourself? Uh, work out. Wow. <laughs> Is the driver allowed to get out and help? Does, I'm sorry? Is the driver allowed to get out and help? Yeah, but he doesn't ever need to. He doesn't ever need to. Take too long to get back in. Thanks, guys. That's
that's amazing. Oh, be careful. All right, audio check, audio check. All right, Jeff Terzo, congratulations. We think you are the champion. Tell me about what seemed like a pretty smooth day. Yeah, actually, we had a smooth two days. Uh, it was a super fun course. Igor called a, a great game over there. We were just hitting every corner like we could. Um, we knew today we had to just keep it together and keep hold our position. Um, my brother was on the gas, so it was hard to catch him, but hopefully we finished within that 25-second uh, period to, to beat him and maybe take second place. Any problems today? No, no. Super smooth run. Uh, we, I don't even think we had one close call or anything, so it was a, a good day for us. So we think you got it here, assuming you do. Your first ever Best in the Desert Championship, what's that mean to you? Uh, it's awesome. I mean, we put a ton of time and effort into the sport, so it's it's nice to finally have something to show for it, that's for sure. Another thing I'm amazed at here is there there weren't any team orders. You guys, I figured your brother was going to let you let you pass him. He's trying to, to beat you with a flat tire. What do you think about that? Yeah, that's awesome. Um, I mean, it, it, even we talked before the race, and I said, Dude, you got to go for it too. You know, I don't want to win a championship based off of somebody letting me go. You know, I want to win it for myself. So um, hopefully we track them down on time. We'll see. But uh, overall, fun day for the team. The whole weekend to have your entire family here, all your brothers, baby announce, absolutely everything, and cap it off the championship. Where's this going to stack up in your all time list of racing memories? Yeah, it's it's definitely up there for my racing memories. I'd say it's probably number one, you know. Nothing like competing against your my brother, my brother-in-law out here. Usually my sister's in the car with him, but you know that new baby is coming, so we're excited for that. Hopefully brew another racer in the family. Great job, man. Anything you like to add? Uh, I'd just like to thank you, Theory, my co-driver Igor, my wife, my son, um, the whole crew that comes out to support us, Tisco for putting together a great truck. Uh, the Duke, Dugan's racing engines ran great all weekend. Uh, the Fox shocks were dialed, uh, tuned up by SDG, so we couldn't be happier. Uh, and I'd like to thank Best in the Desert for putting on such a great event. Congratulations. Thank you. Let me get Igor here. Steve? <laughs> Co-drivers never got that. Coming out here ready to compete. Igor, my co-driver, did a great job um, all season. Daddy, uh, I'd Daddy. like to thank my wife, my son, cheering us on, uh, my family out here uh, that allow us to do this and uh, do the racing. Jeff, Daddy, Jeff. I don't know. If, we don't. I don't think this ramp is big enough. That's all right, you guys. But we'll figure it out. We'll get it. All right, what a weekend, man. A bit, we talked about the gender reveal, celebration on the podium. If you didn't know, played in high school, you know, there's sports all throughout their high school, racing at the same time. And uh, you really, I got to tell you, you you know, you compliment them. I'm complimenting you and your brother, your whole family. I always do. Because people, if you want to write a book about how to raise kids, this is the kids, the two brothers, and moms need some.
For more, please make sure to subscribe to Cycle Drag on YouTube. Smash the bell for notifications and subscribe to Cycle Drag. Thanks a lot. Also, let us know in the comments where you're watching from. Thanks a lot. Don't forget to subscribe.